We had had a public hearing at our last meeting on rezoning the B3 district. Uh, we're toying with the idea of calling it the Northern, uh, North Chestnut Street Gateway. We held it open because the Downtown Business Association wanted a chance to review it uh, and take a look at it because they'd helped with some recommendations. So we held it open to tonight. Is there anyone here to speak to this local law? Michael? You don't remember which section by no, chance, do you? Section two. Section two. Bottom of the first page. Section two. Oh, no, I mean, which, yeah, which section of section two? I'm just, I want to see the exact language here. 1A. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Devel it says specifically, development at ground floor level along road frontage shall be retail goods and services and or professional offices with residential uses in the stories above ground floor, taking the form of multifamily rental units and single family condominiums in the stories above ground floor, no drive through rental, sorry, retail facilities of any kind are permitted. Um, I guess other, Kurt, you would, sure. were really most involved with this, because I, yeah. I, I do know that the, one of the planning issues uh, we've had is that some of, for example, some downtown bus uh, businesses um, end up being almost entirely office and retail. Right. So, so I would yeah, I'm just kind of curious about the, comp the particular recommendations or why. Yes, actually, um, the, the idea I had in recommending this um, was that um, the, the office market, the professional office market has been so soft for um, a couple of decades now that, um, that I thought I'd, I'd recommend that it be at the first floor along with retail, however, that's a policy matter, and, and this can be altered if uh, the board would like it. Do you have a recommendation? What? Well, I guess two questions. One is, is that were we to go to take Michael's recommendation, is there a simple language that you would recommend, a formula, a, a ratio? And I guess the follow-up would be to Joe, is would such a change be so substantive we would need to re-notice and re, uh, you know, yeah. do start over from that? I don't, if I can take the second question first, I, I don't think so because the use itself is contemplated by the current draft. You know, it's not like you're introducing a new concept into the, um, in, in, into the law. Um, I also think in answer to the first um, question, which of course uh, Kurt can weigh in on as well, and I think that, that Michael was alluding to this too, you can write language that doesn't so much make it um, permissible as of right, because you are tr you are trying to create a zone that that looks like, you know, business below, residential above. But you what you can do is provide flexibility upon a certain showing in the discretion of the planning board. There's language like that that would allow them the flexibility to do it um, while still maintaining the preference in the code um, for that live-work concept. So, thank you. Uh, my suggestion in this case would be to um, perhaps allow it on the at the second story level. Um, of course, we're proposing to allow four stories altogether. So um, um, I'm thinking first floor and second floor, which and if there were to be a third and fourth floor, those could be residential. Um, unless we wanted to accommodate um, office buildings, it's just that I haven't seen that many in the region proposed in uh, in recent years. So to clarify, I wasn't suggesting that necessarily become an office building. Just that there be some flexibility for if if there is as once these buildings are up they may get developed a certain way, but over time there might be vacancies and if there is the market um, is such that it would be advantageous to have one or two offices in a in a set of otherwise say ten or twelve residences that that might be something the planning board has the flexibility. Again, you could say no more than 20% of the units could be offices above the first floor or something like that, whatever it might be. Um, just, I guess I should say I'm speaking for myself, not as a member of the planning board here. We haven't discussed this. So, thanks. I guess 
the, the obvious two questions are, are of the, the trustees, does that seem like a reasonable change? And if so, the follow-up would be, is it a simple enough one? Since we can't vote on this immediately, we'll vote on it at some point tonight at the, at the fastest. Is it simple enough that, you know, Kirk could write up a, a few words to amend it before we adopt it later in the meeting? But, of course, that's conditional on consensus of the trustees. Well, the planning board reviewed this, mm -hmm. and they didn't suggest that. Right. And I'm wondering why. I can't respond to that. I'm not sure. Um, obviously, the planning board at the time, I, I know it was not that good. I'm not sure if I was even on at the time. You didn't think about it? Or I don't know if I was even a member of the planning board at that point. I don't recall. Oh, that, this is just being reviewed very recently by the planning board. Well, um, or Tom, what do you remember, too, to help Michael out here? I, I have no recollection of, of our discussing this particular point, yeah. and uh, I reviewed this whole proposal before its uh, current iteration, when it was in its original form, and I have no recollection of it being raised uh, in the past or being raised by the committee that I was chairing in reviewing it. So, if, but all of that to say, we just didn't think of it. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah. right now, as Michael suggests it, it seems to me that with some simple uh, language, there could be permitted either a mechanism for making an exception, that is an appeal to uh, somebody, for an exception to be made, or there could be a, an exception written into the rule, no more than 20% of any building. Which is the better way to go? From a, well, from a legal perspective, both can be accomplished pretty easily. It really is, as Kurt said, a policy decision. What do you want? Do you, do you want to have um, the board have the discretion upon a showing for relief from the red, like you could leave it as it is and say as Tom I think just suggested that um, upon good cause shown, um, the planning board may in its discretion allow office use on the second floor. Um, the problem with that language is I would, look, I would not recommend, it's such an important piece of legislation that if you're inclined to consider this option, and I will say for, for my part, I think it's probably a good one. Markets change over time, as Michael has said. Um, and the real point is to have a vibrant downtown, right? So you want it, so. Mm -hmm. But I would not do either tonight on the fly. If you think it's a good idea, you, you meet often enough that after having spent a lot of time and energy on putting this together in such an important district of the town, I think if you gave Kurt and I a week, we could come up with alternate language that could be considered next time, if you're inclined to consider. Yeah. I mean, it's an obvious answer. Um, I, just, I hate to drag this out again, because I mean, this, yeah. this law has been almost ready to go for like four months. So we've been delaying this from meeting at the meeting. Three meeting. years. Yeah. Seven, if you count the more work Mike and I did. Although, yeah. it, it wasn't was, my intention. No, 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 of course not. Of course not. Know that, so it's please. not your fault you brought up a good idea. No, no, no. And here's the other thing. Although it wouldn't be a model of efficiency. You know, frankly, you could continue to consider that change right on the heels of adopting it. I mean, if, 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 if you're generally, if the board is generally happy with the local law as currently drafted, you could adopt it. And nothing prevents you from changing, the, you know, continue asking Kurt and I to consider modifying well, why, don't we, why don't we do this? Since, since we, we're not going to take actions, we dispose of a couple other agenda items. Why don't we kind of continue this conversation later tonight? when we get to this, to whether we're going to vote on this or not, uh, assuming we close the public hearing. But, Could so. we adopt it with the understanding that language be incorporated into it, reflecting what Michael is suggesting? I don't think so, because I think it would be too imprecise okay. to do um, so. Yeah. Well, is there other public comment on it? Let's find out, yeah. <laughs> Is there anyone else here to speak to this law at all? Yeah, Floyd, please. Uh, I'll, I'll just, I uh, guess I'll just say I concur with what Mike's saying. Uh, my, my recollection of the current gateway district is that it prohibits residential on the first floor, but allows it on the second floor. Whereas it sounds like this law is prohibiting commercial on any floor other than the first floor. Because as you know, down on Water Street, they 
businesses that run the second floor. Right. I think anything restricting any business in this village I think, should be looked at hard. Um, I don't think if there's a development in the skating district that's all commercial, that's such a bad thing. I mean, that's good for our tax base. Mm. Um, obviously, there's more than one property down there, and there'll be more than one type of development. And given the way this law is written, and how much it provides for developers, you know, with the four stories, I'm sure there'll be residential, plenty residential being developed there. So, mm. uh, my suggestion would be to do as the existing gates of district is just to give it residential in the first floor, but not really the commercial. Mm. That could be an elegant solution, actually. Yes. Yeah, 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 unless you guys have anything against commercial funding. No. I'm suggesting no. Section 2A, Michael Ray, just add with residential or business uses in the story, in the first two stories above ground. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Michael recommended. Professional. We didn't say any business because there could be many kinds of business uses that might not be appropriate uh, in and amongst residential, but uh, certain kinds of professional uh, offices, I think, would be. So I heard you mumbling agreement to something Sally said. Is that what I was saying? Is that if, if the consensus of the board is that simply simply allowing a certain other type of use there is, is the way you'd like to go. For instance, professional office. Mm -hmm. That's an easy, that is a change we could make tonight. To that, okay. Okay. Right. Right. Yes. We're gonna go with some kind of discretionary, you know, I, I would want time to work. And the only thing, what I would say as far as why I think the professional office, it, and again, I, you know, this is from my experience being involved in this kind of legislation and what the purpose of this kind of legislation right. is. You're trying to build in human beings into the downtown right. to support the businesses that are underneath them. So you, you do, I think, want that preference for, that's the whole idea, oh, right. the preference for, for <laughs> but I think professional office, if it's limited in that way on that second floor, doesn't necessarily afford that. If you're allowing up to force them. So could we just change A basically to say with professional offices or residential uses in stories above ground floor? Or well, I guess continuing the sentence it wouldn't necessarily make sense. But something along those lines yeah. basically. And I think if you said if you just said stories above first floor, <coughs> you then are talking about the potential of what is essentially commercial on the bottom and an office building above. Yes. Right. So Again, I think what I heard in some quarters here was we want the, the option second floor. For, yeah. right. it, it seems clear we're closing, by doing this, we'd be closing a loophole, not really right. altering our purpose. That to say that the professional office, I, right now it's residential on the floors above, above the ground floor. Mm -hmm. right. Michael is suggesting, and her second floor be residential. Second floor. Second floor, professional right. or residential. Anything above that. Residential. Residential. That's what I think I'm hearing. That is a change I think can be made without fundamentally changing the law. You want to thank it? Yeah. All right, so let's come back to that later. Is there any other comment on this local law? Yes, Rich, please. With, that, with regards to that, why don't you make that so that the professional offices are against Route 32 and not intermingled with residential houses and keep the professionals Well, limited. because I think the problem with that, Rich, is which Kurt and Michael both addressed, if you might have a, a need for more residential, and then maybe a year later, more need for professional. So you don't want to, I think what Michael was suggesting, he, open, he wants to leave the first two floors flexible. Okay. Is that right, Michael? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. Any other, uh, anybody else here to speak to this local law? With that, I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, Joe, Kurt, does that sound like a decent change as our plan? Yeah. Okay, good, that good, would, good. That would be just fine. So, yeah. Joe, you'll have that, but let's deal with yes. this later on as administrative business yeah. when everyone goes home. So. Right now. Yeah, beautiful. All right. Um, cool. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you. Um, 
I do have one adjustment to the agenda. Uh, if you look on the reorg sheet, uh, please replace my name with Ariana's as liaison to the Transportation Implementation Committee. Um, other than that, are there other other um, amendments or additions to the agenda? All right, hearing that, I uh, move that we adopt the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, you just made my night. Anytime. <laughs> uh, public comment. Who's here to comment publicly? Ellen, please. Uh, I have a concern. Um, the approval of the State Liquor Authority renewal application for Tabalusa. Mm -hmm. um, I just would like to raise one issue. I certainly don't want them not to be in business. However, um, once for sure and possibly a second time, but I think we were out of time, town is now. Uh, there was live music. It was very loud. I and at least one other person called the police. And we were told that they had a permit for live music on um, the site. Yeah. Um, that's what the police told us, that there was nothing that could be done. My understanding, in following up on that, is that there would be no permit, that that was not required or whatever. Why the police would say that there was a permit, I don't know. Um, but that also uh, reasonable noise, uh, complaints that the noise was unreasonable would also be dealt with and honored. Mm -hmm. um, so in both situations, um, I think there was some confusion and I would, would ask that we get really clear about that. Right. Um, I, I, I remember. I remember what you're talking about. Just so this, they're actually. We, we should probably divorce the two issues because Cavalusa, as a business, did not have anything to do with the incident you're talking about. Um, that's a. It's a Main Street business, and what what you're discussing is, I believe, uh, the owner of Oasis and Cavalusa is the same owner. Also owns the parking lot behind Oasis, kind of behind and up the Platica right. lot. It's private property. People think it's a public parking lot, but it's a privately owned lot. Right. And so they had had a ban in the lot, right. unrelated to the business of Cavalusa. And so the laws that would govern that are the same ones if you had had a party at your house and had a ban. Right. So with the laws of control, you don't need a permit to have a ban at your house, right. um, any private property. But the noise ordinance and other laws do apply. So it's, a, I believe, a reasonable understanding. It wasn't that they had a permit, is that, no, as you said, no permit was necessary. But yeah. the police explicitly said there was a permit, that, and therefore they were not th able to That was a misunderstanding on their part, yeah, um, is what I'm saying. And I was also, the police were also not clear in distinguishing whether the space was private property or part right. of the business property. So again, I, I'm yeah. not asking that this interview with the application. I am asking, however, that this this kind of issue be clarified so in the future both the police and the public yes. know what Thank you. applies. Yeah. Thank you. Well, was this removed from the consent agenda? I know Sally had talked she about She had asked because we hadn't had the reports, but right. we got it. We, we that do that. I'd like yeah. to talk about it. Um, okay, so. Not, not really, not really substantially, just kind of in the idea of um, having some sort of baseline of what like these the police complaints need, basically, in comparison to other businesses. So I just want to have a discussion. So I don't know if you want to remove it from the consent agenda or have it now. Well, since it's since Public the complaints comment. have nothing, no, it's since the complaints about noise are unrelated to have cabs. I mean, it's the same owner, but you know. Right, right. I'm not talking about that specifically. But I'm talking about the list of police report, the police report. We okay, have. then we can remove that from the consent agenda. Yeah, that's what are fine. You doing? Removing Cavalusa from the uh, consent agenda? I wasn't sure if it was already removed because you had asked about it, but then we got the information, Sally, that it was related to it being approved, so that's why I wanted to just remove it so we could talk about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would like to request that we not do Sarah Lavari as part of the consent agenda. She is here this evening, and I think what she is proposing is worthy of the rule. And the audience to hear what she's proposing because I think it's so commendable. I definitely agree with that. <laughs> Try, in the future, let's okay. do this before we adopt the agenda so we know what we're doing here. Right. This is this is exactly what eats up our time at the meetings here. Okay. I send a list. Uh, Sally, how about if we have her address what she's doing, 
essentially a, like a public comment um, it's, and just keep it in, in our consent that's agenda. That's fine. Okay, beautiful. Either way. All right, more public comment? Sarah, why don't you tell us about your event? Okay. Perfect. So, hi, everyone. I'm Sarah, and I have a proposal to have an event at Hazard Park tomorrow at 7 for a Kickoff event for a foundation I'm trying to start. Um, I'm not going to second. Absolutely. Okay. What's so the foundation for? The foundation I'm starting started off as a club at Simulsa, and now it's branching outward. So basically, what we do is we create dolls. Our first group of dolls are made between 30 Girl Scouts, and they make the dolls and donate them to foster children or children in domestic violence shelters. <coughs> and each doll has a pocket on the back that inside it holds a letter. <laughs> uh, why don't you announce, because we're live on television right now, why don't you say the date and time so people can... July 27th, right mm -hmm. over there at Hazard Park from 1 to 7. To bring your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. And Th I have um, papers. Thank you. Look for other hand people who haven't spoken. No, no, yet. that's fine. I understand, and um, I'm. I think that the the plan and the idea and the kickoff event all sound wonderful. However, I would like to ask about what uh, the live music is and how loud it will be, and um, what again, what protections neighbors have, what people within hearing distance of the park have. 
Again, what we have is protection is the village noise ordinance, which actually Sally probably knows in and out better than anyone in the room at this point. Um, but the music itself? Uh, it's it's going to be com uh, just acoustic. Wonderful, wonderful. She, she stopped listening to acoustic. That's all she could do. That's, that's <laughs> really <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> the Ricola horns, you know. The, uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Does, does Sarah and I need to stay for any formal approval, or are we good? Unless you'd like to. It's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Then no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your little sister. Oh, that's beautiful. awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I think you want to clarify for Sarah that her mo that Sarah's oh, yes. mother, Stacy, is is taking the responsibility for Yeah, because I'm a little young. For this. <laughs> okay. So mm -hmm. do you want to take care of that with the clerk's office then? On a form or do that right away? I well, your name just make a note in the minutes. Form. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're, we got it covered. You're fine. You're fine. In the minutes, it's fine. Yeah. I'm making a note right now. Anyone else here uh, for public comment? Floyd? Um, uh, Floyd Niffin, um, village resident. Uh, I was just looking for a status of the moratorium that you guys passed a few months ago. We're, I'm oh, sorry. I, thought I was wondering if anything's been talked about with the R1 district. Um, we're about two and a half months into a six month moratorium, and Kurt can fill the public in or fill answer your question better than I can. But what's been done since then? Uh, yes, well, actually, Floyd and I had an appointment that I guess you weren't able to make a week ago Thursday. I called you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, sort that out later. We'll get, let's get Floyd the, the update on what's been going on with the, with the zoning update, besides the V3. Uh, okay, well, the R1, um, I'm interested to know what the, um, uh, what the owner of the annex property. Uh, things, of course, Floyd owns this entire uh, parcel that's been apparently given an R1 designation. Um, my recommendations are leaning towards um, keeping the character of that area residential, unless the board feels otherwise. Um, mixed use, I think, is might be difficult from uh, from a market point of view and could be potentially disturbing to the residential fabric of that area. Again, subject to the board's thinking on policy on that. Um, but that's, um, I'm thinking of, uh, uh, residential and and requiring sort of a um, a, a clustered or concentrated um, density for the overall site and, and clustering that is appropriate on the site, which does have some natural constraints. Does that answer your question, Floyd? Uh, yes, and I just was curious if you, as a board, felt that there'd be any changes, and if not, if we haven't seen so we haven't seen any language specifically yet on it, so we yeah. haven't brought up. But though at our next meeting, we're going to have to start the discussion of whether to extend the moratorium or not, because it takes several months to get it in place. So uh, at our next meeting, we'll be having more precise discussions. I don't know if that's helpful or not. But uh, when we adopted the moratorium, did we not agree that as things got straightened out, mm -hmm. they would be removed from the moratorium and acted upon? Mm -hmm. So if you have a recommendation, might we ask for it to be on the next meeting's agenda? Yeah, I think that's fair. So th let's uh, give us give us our next meeting, and we'll sure. try to have something writing to, something to, something to work off of instead of an open-ended conversation. Thanks, Floyd. Uh, any other public comment? All right. Uh, announcements by the board. None. Um, actually, there is yes. Um, a young gentleman passed away a few years ago. Ago, um, Jason Kadzik, and. Um, family and friends have uh, purchased a marble bench that is going to be um, positioned in uh, Gardens for Nutrition all the way back toward one of the larger trees at the end of the, uh, of the open area of the property along the wa waterfront. Um, Sunday, June 23rd at 4 p.m., there will be a dedication of the bench and um, that will be followed by um, video shows and just kind of people getting together and um, sharing stories. And that part will either be here or at um, the, the, the small building that sits behind uh, Family of New Paltz, the meeting room that's behind the parking lot. So everyone's invited. Other announcements by the board? None? All right, I have uh, one. Um, 
Cindy had something. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. Please. Why aren't they, as long as they're going to dedicate it there, and I'm a member of the garden, why aren't they going to celebrate there? Oh, they want to show videos, which re which requires electricity. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's going to be a little more of a silent memorial, and they're going to um, do a little riverside piece and then gather afterwards. So, yeah. Any other comments or uh, announcements? All right, I have one, and I know I usually speak off the cuff, but given the, the, the subject matter, I have something in writing. Um, I have, what I'm about to say, I've actually had vetted by three different attorneys, including the village attorney, who could answer any questions. So let me just read this. Um, I have uh, controllers, uh, New York State controller's opinions and an appellate level um, judge's opinion, uh, appellate level case, which holds that a local law with a referendum are required to change an elected official's salary midterm. Uh, Katie, would you, I have the, uh, the, the case, the judge's decision and the controller's opinion in question uh, for the board and, and any of the public who are interested. Tonight, I'm formally asking that the village board either rescind its resolution decreasing my pay or if a majority of the board um, very much really want to pursue a local law and referendum, to confirm that reduction, to ask our village attorney to draft that law seeking the reduction so that it can be voted on by this board. I'd like to know whether this board really wants to adopt such a local law and put it out to the public in a special election or in November. In any event, my pay should be reinstated from the date of its reduction to the date of your vote to rescind the resolution or the date that such a referendum is held and the people of the village approve it. Because there are new board members, I'm prepared to wait until our next meeting to allow individual members to consider these options, to read the cases, uh, to read the controller's opinions, um, and to consider these options and decide how to proceed. But I'm prepared to pursue this in the courts if there is not immediate action appropriate to the matter. I have a second controller's opinion, um, and it is important to note that the, the, the Supreme Court decision that's being handed out now has not been uh, challenged, appealed, or overturned, and nor have, and the controller's opinions that are being distributed have not been superseded by any decisions since. The second controller's opinion, um, based on the second, second controller's opinion, it is my understanding of the law that the compensation of the position of mayor or town supervisor or trustee or councilman, ma council member, is not linked to an hourly minimum but is tied to the discharge of the duties of mayor under a schedule which is under my control as long as I'm in the position to which the people elected me. So as I mentioned, I'm not asking for an action tonight, just for the board to consider this new evidence um, in light of uh, the judge's, I can't remember his name, but the judge's decision and the opinion of the New York State Controller, and I'm sure that we'll have future discussions about this. I will ask the attorney to research this because your salary was increased midterm from $22,500 to $35,000 a year at my recommendation, and that if your opinions are correct, that was the illegal act also. Actually, no, just clear to not put words in my mouth accidentally. Um, the, if you see the decision, it's the judge's decision itself deals only with a reduction of the salary and has, is silent on the issue of changes in general. Um, so, right, I know, just so you know, and Joe, of course, is going to be giving us his opinion, and, and unless, Joe, you have something you'd like to no, I, I add here. I, I don't think it would be appropriate for me. I am aware of the decisions Jason shared mm -hmm. with me today. I don't think it would be appropriate for me, A, in public, given the fact that there is potentially the implication of litigation, and B, off the cuff to you. Um, but I will be happy to provide you a, a survey of the law on this subject. So does this, re oh, may I ask the question, sure. does this require some action on the part of the board to consider these? Do we have? Not tonight. No, no, no I understand not tonight. And, and I would take the uh, two meeting law uh, <laughs> seriously. Uh, that we not act on any issue that's introduced at the time of that meeting. Uh, however, you, you requested some action tonight. So what is the action that we can take other than having this in our hand and hearing from the uh, village attorney that he'll advise us? I, well, the action I'm asking for is to, to, to rescind the decision of the prior board um, based on this new information, but more importantly, to act based on your understanding of the, your attorney's opinion. That's really all I'm asking for. And so since you don't have that yet, 
you have to plug to see what that is. I think if, you, if the board were to give me the direction to research the issue and provide you with an opinion on it, I obviously would do that, and then you would have something to act on, including all of your own considerations of the issue and your own intelligent review of that. I move that the village attorney uh, review the uh, material that has been uh, provided to us concerning the matter of the reduction of a elected official salary and that he advise us uh, in the immediate future about the uh, options that we have for action. And I will amend that to say both sides. In other words, Jason is presenting that you can't reduce it. Well, and I'm saying it needs to be researched on both sides, whether you can. What I'll provide you with is, is the objective review of case law and that. statutory law and so um, all right, it's been seconded. Any other discussion? Um, oh, sorry. I guess my, my only question is, all of this is town, does that mean village as well? Well, I think questions like that are, are certainly part of the inquiry. You're right, the, the, the New York State has both a town law and a village law and right. a city's law. Some general municipal law applies to both. Not all provisions are the same. Some general municipal law, if not all, applies to all. Some municipal home rule law applies to all. And then there's rules of construction about whether certain provisions of other laws will trump those. That is the nature of the inquiry, and, and that's what I'll be providing. Obviously, I think it does, but we'll see what Joe has to say. Actually, do I? Wait, all right, so any other discussion? No. So. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do I vote on this? Is it a conflict no. of interest or something that I have asked them to do? Aye. So I abstain for conflict of interest reasons. All right, uh, any other announcements by the board? All right, beautiful. Um, I move uh, we adopt the consent agenda. Second. May, may I ask yeah. one thing on the consent agenda? Um, I see the meeting dates set forth there. Mm -hmm. I was going to offer to the board um, assuming that you know, this goes forward, that I be at two meetings a month. I can tell you that on the second Wednesday of each month, I have, an, I have a long-standing conflict that will make that possible. Um, so, first and third, first and fourth. I mean, I see that you have second and fourth in there, and I just I hate to take out the possibility of uh, unless you. You don't mind the status quo, which is one meeting a month, and that's fine. But I just want to mention it to you because I don't want to come back later and, and say that if it, if it matters really to you. I mean, I don't mind the one meeting a month, but I know that part of why we did the second and fourth is because school board meets on the first and third. Yeah. So that's that's that part still of, true. Yes. Okay. Just yeah, they change it sometimes. I yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So that that's part of part okay. of why we did that. Um. Just to allow both the community and. Yeah. school board members to come to our meeting as well as us to go to theirs but um but that's obviously if the board if other people feel differently at this point well, I'm okay. what it would it be all right if we just if we kind of moved on with the consent agenda and if we want to alter that later with the discussion of meetings after people are this is like internal business and we don't need that's people here yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a point of interest let's just bring it up later in the meeting and we, we need to change something address it another way too. yeah i think we have to leave it the way it is yeah. right and yeah just for a second and fourth and when joe can be with us he can be with us all right uh it's been moved and seconded is there any discussion all in favor all right um so sarah if you're watching your uh, event has been approved uh, the peddling and soliciting, what's, uh, where are we at with this here? Joe's actually drafted legislation that you guys will sit, that I have that to circulate to, so you might want to table it tonight to be able to digest the, the, his, what he's produced for us, um, and we can bring it back to the table at our next meeting, if that's so pleased with Actually, uh, before we do that, I'd like, I'm sorry, go ahead. I would like to do that, but there were people right. here to speak to. Why, why don't we have Joe give a synopsis, because there are people who have been waiting, so they at least understand the concepts of not the particular language. I apologize, what, what was the subject? Peddling and soliciting. Peddling and soliciting. Yes. Okay, so here's the concept. The, the peddling, the, the current ordinance on peddling and soliciting in the village doesn't work. It, and, and by that, I'm, I'm not even talking about the policy that would go behind, uh, you know, how much peddling you want and how you want to regulate it. I'm saying that there are real gaps in, in, in the language, like it talks about an appeal but doesn't tell you who to appeal to. It has no procedure for how those matters are considered. It says things like the clerk, the poor clerk, 
makes these decisions on denial or approval, which is fine on the first level, but without any direction at all on, on why they should be approved or denied. And then you get to the issue of the policy, which is that when you read the Pedler Law now, I can make a legal argument, and of course, have the clerk's office, my office has done so. Um, obviously, we have given out Pedler permits here. I think the Pedler permits that we have given out are, are defensible, or we wouldn't have given them out. But I will also tell you that the way that law is written, you can make an argument that no peddling is allowed in the world. It, it talks about having to move from place to place every what is it? I can't even remember. It, one one it, thinks it's 10 minutes, and then one thing that says 30. Right. So <laughs> it, it's almost like it's so, really talking about. And, and you have to move at least a quarter of a mile right. from your location. You can't be within a quarter of a mile right. within the same day. Is it's there a like, quarter mile distance to move? Exactly. That's the thing, right? You could go to Highland, apparently, right. and, and pedal. So, so that, look, that's just a bad, that's inviting problems, it, it, um, it, and it's not really a proper expression of the legislative intent with respect to peddling. I mean, right. when you have a downtown village where, where certain, a certain amount of street vending seems you know, completely consistent with the character of the community. You know, we, can, we all think about Saturday in the park and all that kind of stuff, right? On the other hand, there are also real concerns about you don't necessarily want such a proliferation of, of peddlers that you're negatively impacting established businesses and storefronts or where you can't walk 30 feet down Main Street without bumping into one. So there is a balance that has to be achieved. Um, but at the very least, there's a there's a procedural issue that I think has to be uh, addressed. My understanding is that the last, that when it was first brought up, there was understandably a desire to maybe get the input of the downtown business association on how they felt about it, from so that the board could make a policy decision on those kinds of things. But all I can say is what I have drafted is is. It does two things. One, it provides an actual appeal procedure so that ultimately these decisions could get to the board if, if they had to. If they were easy administrative decisions, they get issued. If not, there's an appeal process or if they get denied. The other thing is it suggests a more permanent nature. Of, in other words, if you're going to give somebody a peddler permit, I think it should mean what we all probably think it means, which is that for that given afternoon or for that time period that's been approved, that peddler can be in that place, in that fixed location with their cart. Beyond that, all I would say is I would just ask the board to really think about um, how it would like to handle this. Uh, obviously, it's not a hard law to write either way. If you give me direction on, on, on what we want to avoid and what we want to accomplish, it can be written quickly. Um, I would. I don't know if the downtown business association has actually submitted anything formal on the subject, but I would encourage them to do so. Well, Katie kept a list of comments, I believe. I did, and the general consensus from the meetings from the meetings with the DBA um, is kind of split. Um, half of the DBA will tell you that they think. Um, competition is healthy and good, and the other half will say it's not fair to brick and mortar businesses that stick it out year round. Um, the entire consensus of every person um, that's spoken has said they are uncomfortable with the idea of someone walking down the street with a hot dog truck or an ice cream truck or a it, right, in other words, the current law doesn't work either if you were really to have people enforce it, right? People wandering down the street with their hot dog truck. Um, Listen, I don't, it is a policy decision. Um, I, I just think the board, uh, you, you know, you've got this draft in front of you. Maybe now that it's sort of come up again with I this. Don't have it. The, they don't have it yet. Oh, okay. okay. Well, this, they came up in our conversation. Yeah, the old oh, this is the old one. Well, mm -hmm. what I would suggest then is that Katie circulate the draft tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that it's just become one of those things now that the new board is fully constituted, I would really ask that you put it on your plate because we, we had some very tough decisions to make, which I have to tell you under the current law are, are just, they're just not going to get any easier to make. And they do, I think, expose the village to some criticism. Mm -hmm. So just think about it. Read the draft and think about it. Should that also go to the DBA? Well, but I mean, it is on the agenda, so I wonder who, why we didn't have it. Because I didn't, cause jo because I didn't have it when I set out the agenda, the, as, so at the time of the agenda. I'll move to put it on the agenda of the next regular meeting. Second. 
Aye. 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 Uh, Paul, I know at least, who else, someone else is here for the peddlers? Uh, my partner Yeah, I, I mean, I know you guys have been waiting, you guys have at least know where we're at. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of understand, but would I be able to just, like, take a stand Yeah, that? yeah. Please. Yeah. Um, I, I, I totally agree with what you guys are all saying. I totally know. Yeah, I, I totally see that side of the argument. I see both sides of it where I don't want downtown business to be cluttered with guys selling t-shirts out of a bag. I don't want to see 50 hot dog carts um, all like, you know, just so that people can't flow in and out. I'm just, I'm here tonight because uh, my business partner, Bruce and I, we're planning on buying a, a food truck. We already have the parameters to, um, to comply with what's already in the process that's already in place where we have um, permission from private uh, property owners to do business with our food truck on private property. None of that is, that's not gonna affect us because we'll be able to do that. So that's not a big deal. I want you to know personally though, that as an as a employee of the Main Street Bistro, I've worked at p and I've lived here for 25 years, I don't want to compete with any of the downtown business. I don't want to try and be that person who, when we're in, in business, I'm not trying to kick off business from those local downtown businesses. The brick and mortar businesses, yeah, you pay taxes, you have your business, I'm not here to take any of that business away. What we're looking to do is, for, like, our business plan is basically to provide an alternative to just pizza for late night, bar kids, college kids, and lunch closer to campus. I don't want to be downtown. I respect Doug too much. I respect my bank. I respect Debbie. I respect all the people who have restaurants downtown too much to try and take their business. I want to start my own thing. So that's the other thing. I think that I think that you alluded to it a little bit is to do it on a petition basis to say, and, and this will probably make the Downtown Business Association a lot happier as well to say, well, what's your plan? Are you just like some guy who's going to be selling? jump on the sidewalk or where are you going to be located, where is your main, um, where's your main location going to be, things like that, which I don't think we're going to affect. Food trucks, obviously, I, I don't know how familiar everybody is with them, but they are a hugely popular new, you know, within the last five, ten years, have become very trendy. Um, my partner Bruce and his wife are both CIA culinary grads. We, we have this whole business plan set up. We're not going to suffer, no matter if you say you're not going to be able to offer these permits. We're just looking to have another ace up our sleeve to say, if we can get a permit that says, hey, if we can go out near the craft fair for the weekend, or if we can be on public property somewhere besides just the two places for private property, that's all we're kind of looking for. So like, I came into this meeting not knowing, I'm glad that you brought it up, I'm glad that you said, well, you know, it, it is, it's foggy, it's foggy uh, you know, wording, it, things don't make sense right now, there's a little clarification on it, that's fine. But what I want to know is, like, in the future, when we clarify it, if we can possibly petition to get a permit so that we don't have to worry about just being at this spot or this spot, but also have maybe even a limitation that says, okay, well, you know, don't be here during these times, or if you're gonna be here, it's on a limited, you know, you got a petition for for the day, or something like that. Like if there's a big event in town, like the Regatta, if we can park somewhere in a public property so that we can also be, you know, have a chance to make money. You know, I've, I've lived here for so long, you know, part of the community as well. That's that's all we're looking for. Like, mm -hmm. It's not gonna, I, I don't think it's really gonna affect us, except that it, we can have an extra added bonus. Yes. One day, oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, events and things that you're talking about, yeah. that's a whole different thing. That requires peddlers, vendors, permits yeah. for that event. For the so debt. Not be and that's already, that. yeah. Right. The big discussion. Well, we're looking, we already have the permit to fill out for the right. year long. We want to fill out the one year plan to have it so that we can do private property ones. But I'm assuming that there's also, if we have. And, and you're right. If I, I know that if I assume that I can go in and just get a one day per minute, that's going to cost whatever it costs the petition for that. What I'm saying is, I would like to have a one year permit that says, okay, if you're on private property, you have the permission from those, that's fine. But if 
also you have this gold member permit, then we can, then, you know, like is, you know, then we can be like we park in a spot downtown for a special event or something like that without yeah, having to get another permit or a separate okay. permit. Okay, that's. I mean, is that what you're saying? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah but yeah. I, you know, I don't, don't want to have to keep fighting. Like, you know, if there's something that comes up that we're like, oh, this is going to be going on, like, um, I, I can't even think of it. This. Like, this is good. Sarah's event in Peace in uh, Hasbro Park. Right, right. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Something like that. Like, it, you know, if we can say, okay, well, we have a permit that says we can go where we want to, with the understanding that. 99% of the time, we're not going to be interfering with downtown business. We're not going to be interfering with, um, comp you know, competing with the places. Like, we're not going to park right outside of the bistro and sell. But if and that's the kind of permit that yeah. you're speaking of, Paul, that's my concern, and I think that is the business's concern. But this is also, this is, a, we live in a competitive market. And if, like, I understand the brick and mortar businesses saying, that would be like Scotty Burger or, or Anthony Crispy saying, I don't want another pizza place to come into town. You know, like, I understand their, their, I understand the brick and mortar businesses saying, we don't want another thing to come down to, because I pay taxes on my building and I do this and I, and I pay the rent and I have to do all this. I understand that, but that, like, that's, that's the nature of, you know, capitalism. So, <laughs> you know, I'm, but I'm not here to, to be that person to say, I don't care about you, me taking your business away. I'm respectful of that. I just am saying, if I wanted to, you know, it's within my rights to say, I'm going to set up, like, I'm going to set up a place right next to your place. I'm not going to do that. But I can, but it all, it all, you know, when you look at Moonlight Cafe and, and um, um, Yannis. Yannis. Right. They're like right next door to each other. Or there's two pizza places next door to each other. They're allowed to be next door to each other. I don't think anybody should say you can or can't open your business because I'm already in business. That's that's the problem that, that I have, but I also understand that I'm not going to do that. And that's, you know, I think that's why you should do it as a petition. Um, just as, and it's my opinion. It's, it's not like I'm telling you what to do. But I think that, that what you said before as have it as a case by case basis, I don't want you to have carte blanche to say anybody who wants a peddler's permit can have one, and then you have 50 guys selling hot dogs and ice cream and t shirts and stuff just out of a paper bag. Yeah, I don't want that either. I, I think that would ruin, like, downtown is cluttered enough as it is. Um, but I also don't think that the, that the brick and mortar businesses have any right to say, we don't want anybody else to open a business down there. That makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Okay. Deb, you had a, a quick Yeah, comment? I just, in the scope of this, and hopefully I'm pretty clear, what you guys want to do on private property is what I kind of said two weeks ago. If somebody has a private property and is willing to rent to a food truck, and it happens all over the United States. I don't know about the world, but it does happen. So be it. I have a private property. If I want to rent a space, it should be allowed. I pay taxes for that space. I want to charge that person rent. That is my thing. About the village streets, I'm already on the record of how I feel. There's no space for a truck, a wagon. I got, I'm watching strollers, people walking. We already are always arguing about parking and parking places. It will not be safe. Private property, absolutely. Sure. Special events is a separate topic. Yeah. And I want to say this for one thing is I work with KT on a, a, several, a few very special events. The only event that we ever waived the vendors was the 125th because we only allowed the New Paul's people to vend. Blood A, Everybody, all the others, we had them pay the $75 for that day because it went to the cause. I know Paul, he would be so happy to do that. So I just want to tell you, it always went based on the special event. So for that one day, what it cost is $75 or 50 I, Kate, I'm sorry, you know better than me. Why am I even saying anything? But for that one day event, that is very separate. Sure. And, and it should be always on a basis. If, if the fundraisers are saying, 
we don't need the money, or do it so we can give the money. Okay. So, so we're looking at, at two, from what I'm hearing from the public, is the advice for us is, is to look at this as two. Special benefits versus we well, on one hand, or, except for Paul, Paul is saying that once mind. you're vetted, you're vetted. I was just trying to get money. And I don't even mind if it's a special event thing to get that one day permit. If I got to pay $75 for that one day, I don't care. That's All right, so Joe, Joe, you decide which one of it is right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, what I'll do is. Sorry, Katie, yes. Yeah. Um, actually, as it stands right this second, and it's always at your will as the board. If Paul had a permit, even if it was on private property, if an event like the 126 came up, he could take his business to that, because that, he's a permit holder, he could go to that space um, as long as it was okay with the organization that was having. So if the regatta had property, he could just take, he could just go having a year long permit. What the clerk's office needs is very clear direction on um, if someone is denied, because what came up not that long ago was someone who, when we did the, when we did our report, came up as we were advised not to issue one, um, and um, we got a lot of backlash, backlash, uh, backlash on our decision. We need something that supports us on that. Um, in the end, we upheld it because we believed it was the best decision to make, and Joe, that's what Joe concurred with his advice. I need to know as far as private property. Great, you have private property. You're a your doctor's office, and on the weekend, are, and there's a difference between having one hot dog truck that can operate out of your parking lot and four um, food, t-shirts, a carnival every weekend. Because we do have, a, no, but we do have a local business owner who says I want to, to be allowed to do that. One person at the at right now has been told that they can. Um, but potentially that specific area could become a weekend flea market, and I need direction from the board to tell me, are you going to go with that, or we, is that? We have operated, the clerk's office has done a, a, a very good job over the years, and has operated under several of the principles that are being discussed tonight. The problem is the law doesn't really clearly mm -hmm. spell any of them out. So I think what I'd like to do then is, um, with the, by Friday, I will recirculate a law directly to the board members that takes into account some of these comments, and um, and you can start to consider where you want to go. With. That's right. Yes. But the point that you brought up was the primary majority view of the people, the business owners that were here. It was not half and half. Five, and I don't myself have a problem with Debbie renting her lot to somebody with a lease agreement, and they're happy. The issue is whether you should be running around up and down the street. On, on a public street. On a public street. Right. That, that, that that's is, the big. That's, the, that's, <coughs> that's which, in the black and white. Right, right. Which, right which is not as quick as you think. Uh, just to give you one example before we move on is, think about the, um, the, the, the sidewalk as you, as you go from, from gourmet pizza to rock to pasta. And, and tell me the difference between having Paul's food truck on the street versus four feet over the sidewalk in a private property um, as you go up the, towards the Oasis lot. Right. So you know, so it's a, it can get kind of like it becomes like a distinction without a difference. In right. well, so it can be trickier than you think. Public right. is public, and it, it doesn't matter true. whether they're and five it, inches apart. And it's not just a competition issue; it's a quality of life issue. It's That's about right. what right. do you want the street to look like. But and, a public space is also private property, according to the law as is, can be considered a public space depending right. on what that right. is. Absolutely. So that lot that you're referencing technically would be considered, according to this, a public space. Right. So those are those are the things that have to be considered. Can I try one more? Paul and Katie. The question is, you're talking about that specific spot that the. Entranceway between Gourmet Pizza and Rock and Pasta going up to the Oasis lot. Right. Not, not specifically. Any any I'm, property I'm which is specifically that yeah, spot. Right. Any any yeah. that's generally publicly accessible. So what is the market? Because that mobile could be a possibility. Uh, I don't think like one of the one of the potential places that we might be is because I I I thinking of being behind Oasis by the fence, but Bobby Downs also owns that property. If I ask him to be in there, technically, if he owns that lot and he says I can do that, would that make like what you're saying is it's private property, but that would still be considered yeah. public property. Under the current law, you need a, a, a village permit to operate your truck 
on private property if yeah. that property is generally accessible to the public. Right. So exactly. Costner Brothers needs a permit lots, for Wall Street Market. Parking lots of schools, banks, gas, gasoline service stations, shopping centers, and other retail stores and establishments. So, so even and that's permission from Bobby to be there, that's not a that's not it's, it's technically a public space, even right. though it's privately owned. It's not under the private that you need a permit. You have right. to be oh, to I'm planning to have a permit. permit. Yeah. Right. 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 But we're, we're obviously yeah. going to be changing this Right. In some capacity, and we and just don't know what that is. Because I was ignorant of what, and, and I guess I'm not the only one because the wording was muddy. Exactly. But I think they're more to find out actually what was in place and to, and to answer these questions to find out where, you know, what's possible and what's not possible, what we need to do to make things like our optimal situation possible, you know. But again, he is one of the people that, um, you know, one of the plans is to be in that backlog. But I, he also said, well, I own that piece too. You know, I don't think that's really my idea of where I want to be late night, but um, you know, if I wanted to, I just want to know like, if I say, okay, I'm going to be parked here, that, that is going to be a problem. I think that. And we'll find out. Katie? Um, can I also ask the board to consider what their feelings are um, when we have an event like the one, the 125th? Last year, we had brick and mortar building owners business owners had to come out and get a permit. Um, perhaps you might want to consider that if someone has a, an actual business within the, the district of the village, we don't have to permit them specially to do commerce on the street. But that's up to you, it's your board, it's your I decision. think we ought to stop complicating this and get a decent that's law fine. written right. and get like, and we discuss this now for three meetings and we're just muddying more the water. And I think I agree with Sally. I think that the special event should be weighed on a special event. Sometimes when you even ask myself to come and get a, a permit, it makes me have more of a commitment to the committee and know that I'm showing up. Uh -huh. Just one more bit of homework instead of the committee thinking they're all coming and then it's rainy and then they don't show and then we, we've chalked it out. So I agree with Sally and there's no money the waters on the special events. And please don't talk to Katie about 126 right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, just, All right. and don't talk to me about it. I'll just send visions of a meeting with DOT. Yeah, <laughs> let's not talk about this now, please. All right. Uh, thank you all for your comments. Um, uh, next up, uh, so we can get Rich home. I can see him swiveling in his chair. Uh, she was sitting here. She's been sitting here patiently waiting to be in the Yep, and so we're going to do Katie right after. I told Rich we'd get him. He has somewhere else to be. He's, he's got to get home. So I'm going to deal with Rich first, because um, this should be a short one, I hope. Um, unless Rich, I hope you'd like to be short. I, uh, well, we've been talking about it for a year, so let's hope it is. Um, Rich, unless you want to wait for five minutes while we interview Katie, it's up to you. I can wait five minutes. Does anyone want to do that? All right. Katie, do you have a preference? Do you want to hear? Are you going to hear about Peace Park anyway? Um, all right, let's get you in there. I move to go into executive session to interview Katie Silverberger for the planning board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we'll be right back. All right. Well, while Richard's getting here, we had last discussed this in February. There were some some discussion with the, the landscape architect, uh, Cynthia Bannon, who wanted to be here but is ill and cannot make it tonight. Um, there were a some discussion of some, some mostly minor changes, um, some contradictory, some clear. Um, while we have no new artistic drawing, um, Cynthia took our suggestions um, and has you know, incorporated them into the design as, you know, as she thought plausible and feasible. And the, what's in your packet, what Rich has here, is the final design that Cynthia came up with in consultation with Rich and Blue. Um, so while we have no new nice pretty color drawing, we have any changes are reflected here in the actual specs that the contract will be using. Rich, Rich, um, So Rich, you want to give us the overview, yep. especially people who, who are at home who may not know that, know what we're talking about? Okay, yeah, I'm Rich Ruth, Bernier Larios, civil engineers for the village of New Falls for over 50 years. Not you personally. Not me, <laughs> about 30 though. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Um, we uh, have developed in uh, coordination with Bean Planning and Design the uh, proposed stream daylighting for the Peace Park. This has been an ongoing project for 
Many months? Yeah, about a year, since actually. Last, a little over a year. Since last year, since the uh, Hudson April. Avenue storm sort of blew, blew out. Um, and Jason kind of brainchild this whole, uh, it was his initial idea to go with this route and with this route. And um, we have prepared, uh, we actually have a, a bid ready set of plans and specifications and had it work with um, being an engineer, being in planning. They gave us. Uh, so I don't want to cover the microphone. Right? Just move this they, they gave us. Uh, I have their latest and greatest rendition, and I believe Sally, it is based on, you know, the latest comments that were provided by and the board. The comments of area and yeah, and the, la yeah, the latest one. So I mean, I received the latest uh, plans probably a month and a half ago, from being and incorporated them into the contract set. That if, if anyone wants to come up and see this, feel free. You don't have to sit in the audience. But. Yeah, th this is, uh, and I just wanted to put a little plug in for Brianna and Larry as we did all of our work pro bono yes. to try to get Thank you very much for that. Along, and we spent many, many hours trying to bring this and to this point. And thanks to uh, Katie Tobin and Creo, who got to uh, work with the DEC to get us money, 25,000 materials for this project as well. Thanks. But I do want to point out, Jason, mm -hmm. that has not been calculated in yet in terms of how that will co complement the big documents. And it's yeah, not I, 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 in fact, I do. Let me let me just walk through the plans here uh, mm -hmm. real quick, Sally. Um, it's a uh, seven-page bid set uh, document, and I also have prepared the contract and specifications which uh, is an itemized bid for public bidding, you know, under New York State prevailing wage rate. And um, let me just flip through the uh, the sheets real quick, and I'm going to leave these with you folks. I know you got a PDF on a smaller you know, format. A little, little tough to read, but oh, let me interrupt you too, because. Um, in case, so it's not a surprise, I did ask Rich to work up a bid alternate, not part of the I same bid. About that. Yeah, the bid alternate, which would, um, and he can, he'll get to I'm, it when I'm he gets to it. Get yeah. To that. yeah, okay. Sorry. So, um, what we did was we pre uh, prepared a topographic survey of the whole area, and based on that, uh, being uh, planning and design, came up with a uh, landscaping plan. I did all the hydraulic analysis, the layout of, the, you know, I, I took the conceptual plan from being laid everything out with the swales and things like that. Um, pretty much nuts and bolts, pipe and catch basins and you know, uh, uh, the way to get the water from uh, uphill to downhill. So um, our, our uh, plans basically, excuse me? Grab it. Grab it. <laughs> uphill to downhill, Ele elevation decrease. And um, being uh, provided the landscaping plans, there's three sheets in this bid set. Um, there's the, uh, I believe it's a west plan and the east plan is basically just a blow up of our overall uh, plan and they provided um, landscaping details. Um, you'll see on their plan that they do have a schedule of plantings and a specific areas where these plantings are supposed to take place. Um, I don't have the colored rendition and- I um, wanna see where they move the aqua Yeah. Okay. What's that? You have the other section, right? Not the lower part, but the piece. This is the lower yeah. part. This is so, the upper part. Okay. Yeah. You know what you're looking at. Um, what 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 plant are you looking for? I'm not looking for the plant. We brought uh, up the fact that there is an outdoor theater that she was not aware of. The benches over here. Yeah. That she was supposed to move or come up. I think that's what those are. That, that's is that? The yeah, that's what that is. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So using the shaman that conglomerate. That looks sort of like contour. Like, yeah. That does not look like. Yeah, but in between the contours. Okay, so she's yeah. moving them over. Yeah. This is the I and, believe so. Yeah. And what are they were here? Yes. Yeah, see, it yeah. was there, and now it's just right. moved over. Okay. Yeah. And what what will that be? Stone. Shaman that be stone. Okay. Because yeah. right yeah. now it's like those wooden. Yeah. Right. So, right. And we also have the option of since we don't have the particulars of the stone, like this is not actually we're not cutting a stone this shape, obviously, but we have we can do the rough stone. Um, 
or uh, John Schubert Suny had offered some of those those plain stone benches. So I don't know what what is in, in what is the thought is there, but we could probably uh, use. You our, know, I have to work that that out with you folks on how to put that in the contract, Sally. I just have to get the wording and you know. Well, um, you're limited so, in the contracts. <laughs> yeah, no, you have to tell me. I mean, um, I have to find out where we're getting them from. I have to be able to indicate yeah. to the contractor so this where they're getting. What Bayon was supposed to do. Not to that level. We, we, we have as much stone as we need, so we can use the rough stone, but if we'd like this, the, the plane, we can talk to John about, I don't know how many they have, he just offered it off the cuff. So we'll what? talk to him. To tell you the truth, if, 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 this, if we could get the, the stone from, you know, John Shoup, mm -hmm. and just uh, have, you know, and if DPW bring those up and just keep this out of the contract and that's not have a contractor marking up 15% for right, moving right, stone. Right. That's what I'm talking about. It's probably KT's donation has to be fitted in and removed from bid documents. Well, I'll let Rich and KT address that, actually. Yeah. We, the, as far as we're concerned, the 25 grand can be spent on materials such as drainage materials, native stone, structural fill, Seed and plant materials, erosion control materials. And can you notice this? I mean, it's just. Well, there, there's a lot of well, other. Let, let, let Rich get through because it may answer some questions once yeah. it's through this. I mean, there's a lot discussion. of other drainage materials that that can be spent on. So right. um, I'll speak with. I'll talk with yeah, and then that's, that's the literal wording in our <coughs> contract, um, but it does have an et cetera. The, the big piece is that it be materials. Mm. So yeah. that it not be labor, that it not be design. Right. But it's Stuff. Right. Right. So I, I'm sure that I have some flexibility there. Well, is this a tree here? Is that what that is? Uh, I believe that's a that those are that's a tree, and there's a smaller plantings. Because I know we talked about, and maybe you know, maybe if I was looking at the property itself, it wouldn't it wouldn't be an issue. But I know we talked about. I think Brian actually brought it up. The just visibility. Of oh, I brought it up. And oh, you was, brought it up. Okay. It that you should be able to see from the top down without a lot of trees in here. Right. And that's why I'm just saying, if, I don't know oh, if we... You know, I, I talked to Cynthia about this specifically. Yeah. And she said the way this is designed is that um, we'll be able to do that. Because, the, I mean, neither the trees species, the, 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 the shrubbery, I guess, is low enough. And the trees would be obviously above mm -hmm. your head anyway. So you'd have that kind of, I don't know, knee to head... She had yeah. a very dense foliage there that I she said she, 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 she This she is she different it. than yeah. what it was. She, I'm pretty she sure this part addresses yeah. it. Okay, yeah. so yeah. she, she got it. And if yeah. I understood what these yeah. species were, I could probably... She, she you know, yeah. Yeah. This, this talks a, a lot about uh, age. Yeah. So I think what she, what she, when I talked to her, I talked to her for a while after meeting, and so what she came up with, I think, was something that was had enough plantings that you're not going to be walking right at the top of the waterfall, but however, but also, and you know, but some trees enough to have shade. Enough. Yeah, right. Low enough you can see over them, but you know, so enough plantings that you're not going to be stumbling over the that, you know, as a safety measure. I mean, we don't want people falling in. Right. But we do want it visible. We need the, the middle ground is what we need. I That's just designed here. Back yeah. From the original that was oh yeah because okay. I know kids this is yeah amazing no, yeah. yeah we know that was one <laughs> <laughs> he's a dad he's I'm my, my wife used to walk this from right. the, from yeah. Gage Hall this so. gives all the heights too. oh it does give all the heights yeah, yeah. exactly three to four feet high two to three feet high mm -hmm. yeah New five yeah. gallons of inkberry holly that just sounds dangerous what's five gallons how about no, the size of the plant? No, they're five gallon it's pots. Pot. Oh, yeah. okay. The, the, you can uh, tell it doesn't garden. Uh, yeah, I don't. That's the negative. <laughs> so, anyway, you, you know, I'll leave these here. Yeah. You can take a look at them and you can speak with Cynthia. I really can't speak to the landscape escaping plan. I, think, um, yeah, so she I can speak to pipes and mortar and things like that and excavation. And all that. Well, I know those are the two big ones, was the well, plantings and the, and the amphitheater thing. Can you bring them up? Can you close them off of the one driveway? Yeah. <laughs> And just and having Ariana, I was going to say, 200 members, there are two openings that go out on to Mohawk right now, or Hasbrook, or whatever. Oh, and it's Hasbrook. It's Hasbrook, Hasbrook. Ave. And it's like it's the continuation of Tricor. Right. One was supposed to be closed off. Right. And that's what we have here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, it's here. Look, that's the next. Four. Oh. See, if you see this, yeah. there's that. That would be closed off. So you would have basically, like Tom said, just tricore over. Right. Tricor and so that's, that's reflecting the plans. We have that here. Yeah, this is shown right here, Sally. Yeah. But what we had, actually, we had to put some uh, guide rail in to, pre mm -hmm. to uh, prevent people from yeah. going down into a swale. So right. 
that is closed off there. So, okay, so there is the one, you know, mm -hmm. ingress, egress. Yeah, there's a close up of that lower portion. Yeah. That's the, that's the upper portion. This, this is all landscaping, okay? Right. Actually, this shows the, the guide rail coming up to this spot right here. Mm -hmm. so. And you have lands, typical landscaping details from the landscape architect, and you have some standard details, civil engineering details with um, guide rail, mm -hmm. uh, the grass line swale, trenching details, catch basins, um, uh, handicap ramps, which uh, segues right into the, uh, uh, Jason had me do a uh, two uh, bid additions where there would be crosswalks and some handicap ramps, okay. Uh, at the intersection of Tricor and the uh, and bulb outs as well. That's the alternate. These are these are yeah. options, yeah. If we want to, if you want to take them, you can take them. If yeah. not, you know, and I, I actually put some numbers to them too, Sally. So okay. I'm going to hand those out to you. Are we still under the figure? Um, By the rest of it, we're we're pretty darn close. So um, the main one, the, the additions may go over. That's why Adam has, um, has all. I had, I had you had ninety-eight thousand. 800 in December. Yeah, and that, that, that was that, under that was, the 112,000. Yeah. went along with it. That, that, that was prior to actually doing a detailed design. When you get a detailed design, you can put some good hard numbers to it. Good. Um, my, con my construction estimate right now, and you can subtract the $25,000 off of this. I didn't have this, I just prepared this today. Okay. $118,635. That's actually got a 10% contingency in it, so it's um, you know without 10%, you got $107,000 minus the $25,000. So I, I feel that we're well below 92,000. Yeah, well, well below true. what no, we no, originally no. spoke about. Yeah, 107 minus 25. No, was 112,000. Yeah, replace. Okay. And that was 82,000 to do this. And yeah. all of this is, needs to be under that figure. Yeah. Well, it does, well, hold on. It doesn't. That's up to us. That's not a rule that we have well, to abide by. Okay, but Sally, I'm hold on. Take a breath here. Take a breath. We can always change our mind. So what we came up with was was what now what we have here is eighty two thousand mm -hmm. dollars instead of one hundred for the for this instead of one hundred and twelve for status quo. Now the the additions and this is why I had instead of doing it all into the same package. Things like the bulb outs to narrow that 90 foot intersection, the painting the crosswalks are obviously things that are not necessary right now. Thank you. But if we don't do them now, at least now we have a, a price that we see as ranchers and then later we can choose to do that. <coughs> Since we're bonding for this project, if we choose to, we could do all of it right now and borrow it and space the payments out over 30 years. So if the board wants to make sure that we stay under, if the 112,000 is the most important thing, that the most important thing is to come under the status quo, we can just do the $82,000 project. If it's more important to do the bigger comprehensive thing because we think the potential is worth it, we can do that too. What, is it, what are the bigger comprehensive things? Well, Rich was about to get to that, so why don't we finish, just show these the, the bulb outs and the crosswalks. Yeah, so what I did was develop um, a couple scenarios here. At, one at the intersection of Platico Avenue and Hasbrook Avenue with a bulb out to shorten the walking distance across. Uh, and right now it's that yeah, and right this, here, would yeah. be, this would be, okay. this would definitely and shorten it. What does it shorten it to? Because this is 92 feet and what does it shorten it to? Uh, I don't about, about 60 feet. 60 feet. So, um, you know, to keep. And that would include the painting of the crosswalk and all this work. Well, and then, you know who's going to, um, the DPW is going to paint the crosswalk. Oh, right, easy. So, yeah. you know, I mean, to, get, to hire somebody to do that, it's very expensive. Yeah. What, it, what it includes is curbing, concrete, um, you know, topsoil, seating and mulching and the uh, ADA ramps on each right. side. As well as a bulb out here where there's a, where there's, if you ever go down to Hazard, here, please, if you go down to Hazard Park, you'll see the parking lot, the parking spots actually start a distance away from the curb. So it just seems, what, like why, this is useless pavement. You know, if we could just expand that little bulb out of the, and just have this grass, just seems like a no brainer as, you know, for various reasons. So I didn't, I didn't know how much that would cost until tonight. So that's why I want to bring this as, as alternates. We can, we can scrap them if we want to scrap them. We can consider if we want to consider it. My uh, recommendation to the board is, okay, we just bid Hasbro Park uh, drainage, okay? I had a $95,000 uh, engineer's estimate on that project, came in at $74,000. Mm -hmm. 
jobs are coming in a lot cheaper now. Okay, just uh, you know, due to the economy and uh, mm -hmm. you know, so I would recommend just putting this out to bid. You know, with some minor modifications. You know, we're talking back and forth with Cynthia a little bit. I think the basic project ought to be put out for bid with the alternates mm -hmm. in separately. Yeah, that was a, that's the purpose okay. of them as alternates. And then. Not just one project, but the basic project and the alternates, and we'll see what right. comes in. Yeah, that's so it. That's why they're, they're in the same way they're 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 separated out here. That's what we yeah. get from the bid. Well, you know, sometimes do? people bid it. Well, they're off. well, they they're, they understand it's in the contract documents yes. that right. they can bid on bid edition one, and they have to bid yeah. on bid edition one and bid edition two, and there's no guarantee that they're going to get them. Right. That's right. The right. board has the authority mm -hmm. to reject both of the bid editions, mm -hmm. take one or two or two and or one or whatever. Right. Or, yeah, or just you can throw out all the things. And remember too that, I mean, we just got the water tank at 1.2% interest. Mm -hmm. So there's never going to be a cheaper time to right. do anything. So if it went, we might as well get the so price and decide actually, if you want to. Yeah. Um, so I have a, a question that but I think is not on here. Are very much more important than some of these all mm -hmm. it is. And it might be that we want to do some sidewalk at the cheap bonding rate. Yeah, especially since you did well, that. Well, these kind of fit in with that. These are the corrupt ones that would have been in, included in here. Right, right, right. Well, I, I have a question um, that well, I you guys can, can, can come up I hear a lot of complaints about, you know, now and now we would have two connectors here and here, but there's no way to get from either this side or this side to this side of the road. There's no crosswalk. Um, and I hear, I mean, I see people crossing there all the time, uh, but there's no crosswalk, and it seems to me like if we're going to go, I, I mean, and I don't know if we can add anything to these specific plans, but that's the kind of thing we really could just But paint. remember, we can always write, just do this in-house. Any crosswalks <laughs> so, and painting So, But I'm, I'm thinking just, you know, while we're talking about this section in general, what do people think about that? <clears throat> But we don't need to we don't, we don't even need we don't even need to do anything but paint a crosswalk. And the DPW does that ourselves. I know, great. Right. Well, well, it it hasn't been because I brought this up before and it's been denied. <laughs> well, I agree with you then. That, that's a concern. In other words, if um, if DPW cannot is not able to to fit this in. I mean, in other words, th this one in particular, we know that there was it had a very near fatal DPW. accident there. So it's really too much time has gone by. Well, it should be painted now. Yes, or, or the day after that, that accident. That has nothing to do with this. That should just be done. Well, I think we're all in agreement that some number of crosswalks would be beneficial, if not absolutely necessary. This one seems to me to be a no-brainer. Yeah. And if, that, and I didn't even know about this near-fatal accident, by the way, yeah. Well, if there's been a near fatal accident, we know that it's a very likely place for kids to be crossing over. And if we make that area more attractive, there'll be more kids crossing over. Mm -hmm. Then I think we ought to have that crosswalk included, or if not included in this bid, done. It doesn't have to be in the bid. No, they can go out and paint that tomorrow. Well, then let's say it should be done. It's and that's this, what Ariana I, said. this, I think, is also a highly reasonable. Uh, thing to do. The other, I think, we could also just do ourselves, yeah. right? We can, yeah, we, yeah. I, can, I can do this. If you you can do it. Yeah. I, can, I, can, I can actually uh, design this into the contract, make a crosswalk here also, if you want me to With do the, that. Because it's not, your concern is not just the paint, but also the curb cuts. The you, you're talking ramps, about the curb the, cuts and the ADA. That's the expensive part. Right. No, the none of that was actually my concern except the paint. Because <laughs> everyone's crossing there anyway. We agreed it was going to be painted very shortly there after that accident. No, 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 no. but that was That's this. That's that was that was here. I'm talking about up here. Joe, um, is it? Yeah. I, my understanding is that one of the problems with this, it seems obvious, but on its face, but the fact is once you paint the crosswalk, it has then to be, must ADA, be ADA, compliant. ADA compliant, which is $5,000 per curb cut. Curb cut, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the cost, not the paint. Right. I mean, so if there's no grant, if it's just grant, so if we have a, if we have a curb, and we paint the, the, the cross up, we have to tear out that curb and put the ADA ramp. Yeah, yeah, if somebody crosses with, you know, who is, uh, right. you know, handicapped, they have to be able to get up on the side. Yeah. What's I existing mean, I could, here? I could put, I could, I yeah. could make this. This is, this is really easy. I think easy. the rules it's easy. Where you have a crosswalk is considered a 
a good idea to have curb cuts. Yeah. But it is not necessarily follow that where you have crosswalk, you have to do that. That's what Joe, yeah, is, which, which is it? Well, if you do a, oh, yeah, if you do a new one, you have to have an ADA ramp. Yeah. Yeah. If you leave it alone, you can leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, well, and I think those strike. were, wait, do you want to try? Make some points, City of Kingston, I have a lady in a wheelchair. I would, yeah. Have, I mean, if we're doing uh, it. It doesn't take any time. He, he right. just said he could, yeah. 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 Can we do an alternate with the curb cuts? Or just add that to the alternate. Add to it, yeah. Just yeah. add yeah. it. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. If you like the price, take it. If you don't. I'm oh, sorry, what was the question? Well, well, you can always say no. Is it possible to build in to these crosswalks inside some way? I don't know how. Is it possible? The signs that say New York State law says you must stop for pedestrians in the crosswalk. You have the portable signs now. I'm, yeah. I meant besides the portable signs, if there was a way. Just. I, I mean, I don't see that. That I think is just paint. We don't need anything. If we could get the right stencil, we could put it in the road as far as I know. So, um, well, I, uh, like, you know, like, like when you're pulling off the throughway, you just have the stretched out, you know, 87 yeah. south here, 87 yeah. north here that you read as you drive. Might not be a bad idea. I think it looks good. I'll second. With the amendments, with the alternates, yeah. but I mean, with, and with the additions we added, as for, for that curb cut. That's an alternate. Yeah. I, mean, I do want to speak to Cynthia. Yes, please. You know, to cover some of the uh, issues. <coughs> yeah, I just want to make sure that because my yeah. my understanding when she was with us in February mm -hmm. was she was going to take the changes that we talked about and come back with another rendering to show uh, us the final design so that we're going to do it, 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 This is the final design. Yeah. Well, she did that. She just didn't do it in the color. Yeah, she didn't do it in the color. Yeah, she didn't do it in the color. Yeah, but the rendering was but this one. Okay. This is okay. Well, you know, so yeah. I want yeah. the yeah. rendering deducted from the bill. Well, so we can't. I love a rendering. Well, we can well, ask her to do the rendering. To you. <laughs> see, how, see if she'll just do a rendering based on this. Just change, alter her rendering. Which is what you're talking about, getting, getting an updated drawing to go with everything. That's, so we'll, we'll get that from, from VM. Okay. We'll so take 25 bucks. It won't take long to just yeah. add the. Bless you. Thanks. I'm paying attention. To go to bed on the basic project, out the alternates that we discussed. Mm -hmm. Okay, the one Jason proposed, the one with curb cuts and the crosswalk. I'll second that. Are you Any discussion? I already seconded. Damn. Okay. <laughs> um, I do want to bring up the fact before. Um, and we are, you are know that you're going to work out oh, yeah. or the not be yeah. out. Yeah. What that the best, the best time to construct this project is a month ago. Yeah, a month ago, but now we're doing the <laughs> summer season and planting mm -hmm. during, you know, August and right. you know, the, the, hot, the hot time. The best time to plant, do your plantings is September, October. I know. So, you know, we can actually pull the door for like a month and then bid it and then get things, to, you know, the construction. Well, you, you can bid it now. And then just plant it later. Yeah, you have to hold it. You have to hold it for 45 days and that's the whole thing. Right. Um, wait, you can bid it now. Yeah. Start the construction and the bids are the main thing, you just say you will award it, but we'll wait until September. Yeah. yeah, you can't you can't plan until exactly. All right. There's a motion on the floor, it's been seconded. Any other discussion with Rich or Casey? I just wanted to ask Kurt if he had anything that he should be thinking about as you were in on this. Yes, and actually, uh, at, at this point, no, I've been, I, I think the project has evolved uh, wonderfully. And I think, um, again, as you know, I, I really support crosswalks and those things that may be part of an enhanced project that I think are really important. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Rich. I do have one more handout, just the summer projects, the update on the oh, Thank you very much. And cool. the update on Hasbrook Park. So. All right. so we have Awarded bids. Well, uh, we haven't awarded them. We've opened the bids on that book, right? Uh, yeah. We have not awarded them. No. Yeah. We have to get concurrence from Shippo. Okay. And on what that. about the water tank? The water tank, the. Uh, While you're here, should we do that easement? It's been. Yeah, that's. Really yeah, that's, that's fully negotiated. I circulated it to you guys. Yeah. Uh, it's a. 
it gives you what you need. I made sure with uh, Rich um, that it was, in, in, term, in technical terms, what they needed. Um, legally, it's a sufficient document and a good document. And in terms of the price, the price is right. Everything is, because I mean, I, I read it and it sounds good, but who knows? Um, as long as it uh, adheres to the geometric layout, that, uh, it attaches it as an exhibit. KD, for soon, since uh -huh. you're a partner in this. I'll leave this in the trustee's office if anyone wants to. We got a motion. I'm going to move the authorization of the, the mayor signed the easement allowing with the Moriello brokers. Is that who it's for? I think it's the who I call the father. I've okay. been dealing with Mike Moriello. Yeah, it's, it's Tony Moriello. Yeah. Tony Moriello. Okay. Yeah. So it's Anthony. Right. Yeah. Okay. The second. Mayor, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for that, Seth. Can I just ask? Yeah. 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 Um, I did send you that. Um, I don't know. I know you're moving forward on the Hasbrook drainage project, but um, when we first talked about the daylighting last December, you mentioned, I know Stuart was very interested in main gardens in Hasbrook. So I sent. I don't know if you saw if they anybody forwarded to you, but in this CFA round, which is due in August, there's green infrastructure for stormwater management um, money. So mm -hmm. and that would um, be if you want to try yeah. the rain gardens. Um, yes. Yes. So, I'm very interested good, in rain okay. gardens in more than one location. I think we should be fostering rain gardens throughout the village. Choir. Yeah. Just simple. Let me, on, on, a, on a procedural uh, note. That's all well and good, Tom, but we had trouble even considering getting them for Hasbro Park. So. Um, can, uh, so a procedural. I promised that I would keep my eye out for monies, and I've been sending things along, so let's try to get into this one. So yeah. 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 I'm oh. happy. One pro I'm sorry. Wait, wait, before we get too ahead of ourselves here, um, I just I would need somebody to volunteer to find a grant writer to look into this because Mark Lauer does not have time. We had a meeting um, because the CFA rounds this new process puts all of the grant applications at one time. There's just no time, so he's right. busy writing the $600,000 water sewer. So our only grant writer can't write any more grants during this round except for the water Is he sewer. Even no, he can't do it. He says you have to find someone else about anything other than water sewer. So if someone wants to, I mean, Steve Dennismore is in town. I don't know if Glenn Goodell, Mickey Tony, somebody. But if someone wants to just hunt down a grant writer, see if they get a, a price tag or what it would cost to write such a thing. Um, I'd like to try to get a hold of Steve Dinsmore for you. Perfect. Thanks, Kurt. I appreciate it. Because we've been meaning, I've been meaning to talk to him anyway well, to get another grant writer I mean, in our circle. You have to pay circle. for such things. So no, we're going to price. Ask him how much it costs to do this kind of thing. That's all. Okay. And bring it back to the, the next board table, the more, next board meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And Great. I can show you the exact agency. It's the EFC. EFC. Yeah. Environmental yeah. Facilities Corporation. Yeah. I all right. KT. Things that you're sending to the board, my email address is Rebecca at Village of New Paltz. The Village Forms Work? Okay. Yes. Yes. All right, all right. No, no more. Oh, sorry, I'm going to no, stop. I'm going to stop everybody because it's 9 20. No more little odds and ends. We'll do this offline. Um, but thank you, KT and Rich and Kurt and everyone who worked on this. Um, the next, moving right along, number 12 is not, I, I'm not asking for a long conversation about this tonight. What tonight is, because I, I know that uh, this was introduced last fall. Uh, this is a reformed one. I, I made some changes. But because we have two new trustees, and I do know that the Landlord Association spent some time um, writing some changes. I haven't seen any of them. But I figured I just want to get this I want to get this on the docket. So I just want to kind of, as an introductory, since we have new trustees. Would you be so kind, I will inform them. And I will send out to everybody, if they so wish, uh, the landlord committee's recommendation. We met, Ariana and I sat on a committee with the landlords that was convened by the mayor who recused himself because. <laughs> I wrote the law. It, yeah. it was his landlord was on it. Um, Among other reasons. And so we came up with the whole amended law to mm -hmm. the mayor's proposed law. And we need to get back to that committee to see if they wish that law introduced at the same time. Okay, let me stop you right there because there's a couple little things here because I, do, I don't want to just totally gloss over this. Um, one thing is because this caused confusion last fall, the forms that are attached, as I had Katie write for reference only, the law that I wrote does not, does not introduce any new regulations. It simply um, amends how we enforce the laws that are already on the books. 
So these forms are actually nothing new. This is what we're supposed to be doing already. So these are already in use by the building department, and I had them here as reference because they are referenced specifically in the, in the law. The second point I'd like to make is that um, on principle, um, I know and I'm friends with several of the members of the Landlord Association, uh, but on principle, I'm going to be taking a very hard look at their amendments because I think in general it's a bad idea to have those regulated write the regulations that control what they do. In the same way, I wouldn't want Monsanto writing food safety regulations it, it just in just on principle. There were tenants on it too. I wasn't aware of that. So. Amanda Sissenstein came okay. and mm -hmm. spoke to it. Well, that's good to know. So it was like tenant landlord committee members. Perfect. That that puts my mind at ease a little bit. So just just to be uh, to be completely upfront, I just want you know I'm happy to to look at what they have, but I don't want to have a landlord association's proposed law on regulating themselves derail the conversation about um, this. So we can talk about both, both in parallel. Conversely, yeah. I don't think a tenant association should be real writing. Unfortunately, we have no such thing. So, so. No, but, you know, new firms is always way. wonderful, but so. the, the, the committee that Ari Hahn and I spent hours on was convened you. No, it was actually, no, Sally, it was not convened by me. It was, I came to one meeting and I was insulted and undermined. And if, this, if a group of citizens wants to propose a law, that's great. But we shouldn't confuse a group of citizens with the legislative body. I beg to differ with you, Jason. You asked for the meeting and your landlord asked for the meeting and I suggested it was not a good idea, but it was convened anyway, and the meeting got rather heated, and you mm. recused yourself from, and I respect that, recused yourself, and I ended up and invited Ariana because I did not want to be the only person there for the board. We were, so, so, we were the only two non-renters and non-rentees. <laughs> I say, look, I, I, I bring this up, Sally, because I put this on the agenda to discuss the law that I wrote, not the law that the Landlord Association wrote. So if, if, if that's, a, that's a separate conversation or if they have amendments, that's great. But not having seen them and knowing the tone and, and the points that were made at the one meeting I was at, I just want to make, make it clear that I am proposing this as a legislation. I did not propose this as something to be amended by the landlords later. As far as I'm concerned, this is a polished, finished local law ready to be for public hearing and adoption. So, so that's what I'm saying. And, and, we'll, and we'll have that back and forth. That, that's all. That's all. Yep, absolutely. Um, but that said, I would like to get a general sense of, you know, if people do have particulars or in general. Here's my general take. I, yeah. I, I could not note the difference between what you were sending and the existing mm. regular. So I'm glad in the particulars of the uh, not not the inspection, but mm -hmm. the particulars of the uh, the statute itself. Which statute? Because there's several at the top. It's a couple of you know chapter one twenty nine. <coughs> uh, so what? I, I read what you said. Right. And then I tried to find, and I did find. Right. Some of the uh, existing legislation. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was doing a side by side comparison. Yeah. It was tough. Yeah. That's why I did the. It was tough because there's so much there's so much in that that is just fluff and just like. Things are just we don't need or we're redundant. That's why the best I could do is this, the highlighted version where, and what you see is the highlighted version of the new legal concepts. The stuff that's not, the stuff that's already in the code that I kept, though there is a lot that's cut out. I, if it'd be useful, I can go out and do what I did with the EMCC law and, and have the, all the deletions as well. But when I tried to do that, it, was, it was, became unreadable. I couldn't even follow my own law because it was just, you know, a page and a half is deleted about a board of housing standards. So the best thing in, in reading this is simply ignore the existing legislation, take a look at this, and judge it on its own merits. You know, or, or read or judge this on its merits and look yeah. at the existing as if, as if there were two options for how we want to go forward. Which one do you think makes sense? And then wait for what Sally is going to say. Right. What there are I asked options. to do was to table this whole discussion until we yeah. had the opportunity. I understand. To and, and because, I know, but because it was my law that I put on the agenda, I. I I respectfully chose not to table it in order to have this introductory conversation. Okay. Um, but like I said, I, this is not, I didn't want to go into the, 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 the detail, the wording, the wording or things like that, but just a general conversation about what to do about I, this. I have a question um, because 
It does say that this is currently in use, but as far as I know, it's not. Well, Holly, I provided copies to the building department, and Holly says she's been using them for inspections for months. The checklist. Okay. I'll, I mean, um, I'll double check. I mean, not, that's no, a problem. nobody, you know, in terms of like people that I know who have recently had rental properties, nobody has seen this or seen it be used. You mean the the property owner? Property owner. Well, that's disturbing. I'll find out tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't. Realize. I was told that it was being used right now. Maybe so. maybe it has been implemented since. Yeah. Those properties went in, went into you know. True. But, but as far as I know, I'll the people check. I've talked to, nobody has been using okay. this. I'll double, thank you for that, I'll double check. The, the, this checklist the checklist that says it's currently in use, I've spoken to people who have properties, a um, couple of different people, and as far as I know, this is not in use. Right. Yeah, I agree. That was one of the things that came up at our, our committee meetings, that it's not used. So. Well, I just invented this a few last fall, and the building department is right. supposed to have been using it all along. Well, well, I'm, I'm going to double check. Yeah, I, That's all. I, I'm going to double check. To, so Sally knows, I'm talking yeah. about not the people that we met with, who, but people who have newer yeah. rental yeah. properties, who have just gone on the books. They haven't received this or seen it be used. So I'll put this on the, um, I, I will now, now that we've had an introductory conversation, table this to our next meeting. Um, and, and Katie, would you mind making sure we follow up and get the most recent copy with the landlord association with the tenant input um, for their suggestions. I will get from Thank Sally you. tomorrow. Great, for the but next There is no tenant landlord. No, 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 with the tenant suggestions. Because oh. our answer that it was not I just landlord will, suggestions. I will call Sally in the morning and we'll. we'll so th this will go on the 624 agenda. Oh, 6. Whatever the next one is. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to start start this down the road again. That's all. We didn't need to do that. I also think that the website has, if you have this up, for discussion on this agenda, the agenda of the state meeting is not on the website. I know that. And okay. Yeah, so this, the agenda, and all local laws go up tomorrow. That's that's got to change because if people say, "Why are you acting on these things?" and we say it's on the website, then it should be on the website so they have opportunity to come and call. They're also Please. capable of calling the website. Um, all right, let's move on to the next law. This is actually a more interesting one and much less controversial. Um, the 30-second version of why I bothered to do this is that, well, one, we have currently have no one on the ENCC, um, and it's a good time to step back. And it struck me, as I think I, I, I was explaining to Tom, was that it seems, it struck me, having been a former member and chair of the town's ENCC, that we also basically have an impossible task we have these people up. You know, five or seven people, and we just put them in a room and say, here, fix the environment in the building. So rather than have an open-ended thing, um, I base this um, on, and Rebecca could talk to this a little bit, more on uh, an organizational forum used by the anti-globalization movement in the 90s, uh, spokes council meetings. So kind of groups of three people tasked with a specific policy. So you join the Environmental Commission not because you want to fix the environment, but because you want to work on pesticides, banning pesticides or cleaning the wall kill or whatever else. Mm -hmm. So it has to be task-based. And one of those groups of three would be the administrator, so the chair and deputy chair, whatever, the administration to keep the commission going. Um, that's basically it, is, is to try something new with an, a commission that is important but doesn't have any statutory authority, like a planning board, um, that is kind of broadly policy-based, um, and to try to keep things uh, funneling to the village board from the ENCC to, to really have practical repairs to the damage we've done to the environment. Um, I am. I went a little bit overboard, maybe, on the legislative intent, but I kind of got carried away. I liked what I wrote. But um, uh, in general, I just kind of want some, some feedback. Again, nothing urgent that we need to send to public hearing tonight, unless everyone loves it. But if, if there, I'd like some feedback on this idea, on the concept, whether you think it's workable, whether you think it's, it's, it's possible, et cetera. So I just want to open so the floor. you're basically to asking for two bodies, a commission, and a policy board. No, it would be, the, it would change, it would basically be um, transforming our current commission into this, the Environmental Policy Board. Okay. Replace the ENCC with this. So I, I, I called it the Environmental Policy Board because I thought that that was a more accurate description of what it is we actually asked them to do, is to write environmental policy um, for the village board's adoption. Or, or like, I don't know, grants, what, you know what I mean. Well, generally a commission has regulatory authority. But this one doesn't. Ex so until, why call it a commission? Uh, oh, a board. You mean a board? 
A board has regulatory authority. The Shade Tree Commission has regulatory authority. It depends on, it's really semantics, because the planning board has the regulatory, the zoning board of appeals are regulatory, the environmental commission doesn't, but under law, you can turn an environmental commission into an environmental board, which if you have an open space plan that's adopted, it gives the EMCC, uh, the environmental board, um, some authority over um, planning. Specifically, that if a, a say, say you live, you, you're, Sally, you buy a parcel to develop, Mm -hmm. And right next door is a parcel that we've identified in our open space plan as needing protection. Mm -hmm. um, because your development would impact a protected space, the planning board can't act until they get the environmental board's official recommendation. And if the planning board acts against the environmental board, it's grounds for Article 78. So almost like the way we refer laws to the planning board, that's the only regulatory authority a plan, an environmental How board has. Mandate, which we know they're supposed to do, there is supposed to be an environmental conservation commission member on the planning board or at the planning board meetings. No, is, yes. And what, what do you mean they're supposed to? Is in the village code? The, no, when the workshop you and I went to with the gal from the state that came down and talked about what planning boards should and should not be doing, and one of the things we're not doing is we do not have a representative at every planning board meeting from the environmental right. conservation group and the planning board, as far as I know, I may be wrong, Tom, never has asked the environmental conservation. Since Maurice White. Hmm? He, Maurice was the last liaison from the EMCC to the planning board. But they don't send. Right. Well, there isn't one now. We, there's, it doesn't exist. But even when there was one. Right. And we've got to get that process in place. Right. Well, I think Joe or Kurt could speak to that. I don't think that's required. I think it's a best practice. But, but, and he, wait, hear, hear me out, Sally. I sp specifically didn't list in this law what those groups of three would do. In, in my mind, that's one of them, clearly. Dealing with we land use. We could, we, could distinct, we could have some of them be precise. We need three people to do with land use, three people to do with administration, and I leave the others open to whatever the members want to do. So. But Joe and, and Kurt, there's no law requiring us to send an ENCC member to a planning board. It's, that's just a good idea, as far as I understand, yes? I think, as, as you said, it, it's recommended and it's practiced, but it's not, I don't believe that that's written into. Oh, no, the, it's not law okay. that you must do it, but it certainly is considered a smart thing to do. Yes, those, those communities that want to make the most use of their conservation advisory committees or environmental conservation that my point. do that, and they, then they also try to figure out a place to situate them. They're not sort of sitting in a corner or off to the side too much. Sure. You know, there's, there's a... Okay. So I think that we should get that, that whole habit going as a part of this. If we're going to reinvent rent, the process, let's make it good. Yeah, well, what yeah. do you think? About yeah. the, the law in general or Sally's um, idea in particular? I like both. Um, I've al already spoken to a number of people who are interested in being members in one capacity or another, um, mainly people who are interested in task force projects so that um, you can have some people working on a pesticides issue, you can have other people working on water sewer issues. Um, and really and concentrating on the topic, yes. like the yes. Millbrook Preserve. Right, right. That has not gone anywhere for years. Right. Mm -hmm. I have to say, and this is a gratuitous comment, but I will tell you that in 20, almost 25 years of doing municipal law, the notion of really and truly incorporating into a board or commission like this the think tank concept, really bringing, mm -hmm. really commissioning them to, to do the work um, is, I think, really commendable and fascinating. I have not really seen it before in that. In, in, in set up that way, and I think, and, and I think we've got a unique community to be able. In a lot of yeah. places, I would almost suggest that it could never work because you mm -hmm. you wouldn't find enough people really qualified to do that kind of work. Here, I think you have a real opportunity to do that effectively. But the downside of this, and I won't agree to this unless we all pledge, that when these groups do these things, that they are heard. Mm -hmm. and their suggestions so are considered and voted upon. You want to formalize it before I am not process. going to ask people to do this kind of thing to have them two, three years later 
never having been asked to submit the report, mm. never having the report evaluated right. and acted upon by the board. So I mean, I think this is a great idea, but yeah. I mm -hmm. want it to have all the Well, way I've already started doing that. <laughs> I've already started doing that, which Joe knows. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest so that, 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 that it, if you, unless you're wedded to the name commission, I like that, the environmental policy board as name. Well, that's the thought. Yeah. You know, a policy board or an environmental uh, conservation task force uh, could be another uh, alternative. And I, when I when I first read this over, I wondered what was the point of generating at a minimum five policy statements so you would require each of the task force or commission members to generate at least one unique policy per year but when it doesn't say to be sent in the course of that year to the village board for board consideration. consideration and that's what i want in there Where we? okay so formalize mm -hmm. Uh, how would you say it? Formalize them. Not legislative language, just a note to myself. Just to refer, refer referrals. To be referred referrals to, to the village board during go. that. Uh, during their one year term? During yeah. that term for further consideration. That, and I'll just add that to the report. I'll, whatever, I'll figure out where it goes. And uh, there was another one though. What was the other suggestion? I'm blanking now. <laughs> Task force. It does mention uh, that, policy. And like, I don't care about the That's name. the poetry of it. I, I, I like the environmental policy board. Make sure the name is different than what it is now. Sorry? I, yeah. That's the only thing. I, I, I couldn't hear you. you EMCC. Don't, don't call it what it is now. No, no. Yeah. Front, clean slate. Give it I, a whole new name. I would like to refrain from calling it a task force only because I co chair the environmental task force <laughs> that is already a group on campus. and. Let's just not get more confused. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, with, within was, was the, the other policy board, there will be task forces. Yes, but it's different than liaison. Concept. Oh yeah, planning board. Yes. Uh, all right, no, define one of these. <coughs> things. One must be land use related, one administrative related, and the others up to the board itself. The administrative related would be would be the chair. No, no, would be the chair. Would be oh. that's what well, I was thinking. Now, what? I, I'll, let me write. Let me write something, and I'll, yeah, I'll bring it back. I specifically back. want the planning board reference. Right. No. I. No. I. Yes. I understand. Okay. Any other comments? Because I'll. I mean, I'll just bring this back to our next meeting, uh, as a, with, a, with a second draft, and see what we think from there. That sounds great. That's okay. Beautiful. And just even, if you have other thoughts later, just email them to me, and I'll. I'll take a look. All right. Um, ethics. The ethics. Uh, Stuart was doing this. Uh, I, I mean, I don't see any problem with this. Joe, is this uh, conceptually? I like the idea that the public could file ethics concerns. Mm -hmm. Is there's no nothing legally stopping us from doing so? No, that's specifically what Stuart charged me with finding out for him before you know the end of his term. There's there's nothing that prohibits it. And, um, and is this is this ready to go to public hearing now? That's what this is. I think so. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it was written by uh, second. All in favor? Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. When are we doing the public hearing? At our next meeting? If we can. Well, well, you can do we have any set? We don't have anything set for our, our next meeting? We don't have anything set for the next so meeting. So 7.30 at the next one? You have enough yeah. time for that? One, well, two, it's, two, two, it's two weeks now. Yeah. I'll notice it tomorrow morning. Because we're not meeting on the third Wednesday. So with those uh, amendments, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 That was easy. All right. Um, we interviewed Katie. Uh, Ariana, your, your thought about, uh, um, actually similar to the NCC thing, about having been project based. Yeah, I, I mean, I just, uh, I actually just came out of a conversation with Michael Zeeler, um, to give him credit for the idea, really, uh, where, you know, we I think we spend a lot of our time um, kind of just dealing with what comes before us. And, you know, there's a lot of issues that arise that we end up dealing with, like, for instance, the peddling and soliciting. It's reactive. not something, yeah, we're reactive. Um, it's not something that we chose to work on. It's something that was kind of put before us because there was a demand. So I think that what we could do um, is, you know, maybe we could do this at our next meeting. Maybe we'll do it at our first meeting in July. And it doesn't have to necessarily be a laid out plan. But, um, you know, for example, 
I know Tom is really interested in working on rain gardens, as am I, as probably is everybody else on this board. But, um, you know, if there's projects that we would like to work on and do in the next year, we can kind of come up with ideas, brainstorm, oh, a lot like what the workshop was intended to be, our mm -hmm. workshop meeting, but we can identify two projects um, you know, when I was elected, uh, initially I said I want to work on increasing local food awareness and increasing student internships. And those were the first two things that I took, uh, undertook. Um, so I think that it really was a useful exercise for myself, which I haven't really done since, but I thought that if we share these things with each other, that we could help each other, whether it's two of us working on the same project, or we could just at least update each other periodically, whether it's you know once a month or every couple months, if something has happened. Um, so I thought I would present the idea to everybody, see what we think, and if we want to do it, we can come up with some ideas that we each want to work on and you know have two ideas by our next meeting or our first meeting in July and see what we would like to do. Specifically things not tied to our committees? Like not uh, like uh, it was really you're on TSC, like yeah. would it be outside a TSC project because that's already dealt with in the TSC well, meetings? Or what? A good example of what Ariana's talking about is our parade club. Yeah. We have a parade club. We call it a club Rebecca because Jeff Logan didn't like committee. So, <laughs> we the have parades every once in a while? The three of you like I, watching I like now. to call parade party well, now. <laughs> like Winnie the Pooh is there. The what we wrong. discovered was the parade event park use policies application has not so fouled up mm -hmm. that we have a joint committee made up of two town board members. Ariana and myself, Randall Leverett, who's chair of the commission and the chief, and we are about done without being reviewed by our DPW and Chris Marks and the right. works. So that's yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. A whole new with three Sister. different applications yeah. so that people right. now that's the kind of thing Ariana. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well well it could be something like that well, where it's policies, forms, applications, things that just need revamping, or it could be like Composted. <laughs> Which I would love to see. Going back this what I want to all do. of the minutes to mm -hmm. see what we haven't finished. Right. It's and, it's and it's unfinished business. And it obviously doesn't limit us to two, but sets a minimum of two. Well, well, I think I think two is a pretty reasonable number, just because you know we want it to be. I mean, it could be like low hanging fruit type stuff, right. um, or it could be a bigger project. But either way. I think that with all the influx of things that we have to deal with and the fact that we, you know, I mean, I, I feel like I did not get elected to work on consolidation, but I have been spending exorbitant amounts of time working yeah, on it. Right. Um, you know, and I think if we identify these projects, it would allow us to know what the others are working on outside of the work that we're doing together. But we also, I think, would propose ideas that other people might want to take on. Or, or that others have more expertise in, in that. Group. I have more expertise. Because, Absolutely. I mean, the implementation of the parking plan that we've adopted is just beginning, and that's going to take, I mean, we have met with blue and the layout right. for the long term parking. But, it's, but, so, but maybe on. that's yeah. one of our, our projects that we're going to say, all right, we, you know, just so everybody knows, this is what we're working on for the next year right. as one of our two things, even though it's already underway. It doesn't have to be something completely right. new. Because um, a lot of it, the, it, the, the nitty gritty hasn't been laid out yet. Right. But, and I, I just thought, you know, it'd be good for us to have, you know, for our communication to go about it this way and for the public's knowledge of what we're working on to go about it this way, just because they will then know, also know what we're working on and we can give updates and, you know, it could, it'll be in the you article that's volunteers. written about and Exactly. And we can get volunteers to help us. And if we work as pairs on something that interests you know, which I think already we've come up with some things that interest all of us, um, or more than one of us. So if we work on, on it as pairs, we can like run a committee that way even, or a you know, club. I haven't heard any Her objections, uh, and this is a good discussion, I think. We don't need to take any action. No, no, no. We need to bring two to the next meeting. We need to remind it on the agenda. Well, well, I right. think that's, that's the thing. Do we want to just do this for our next meeting? Yeah. We really don't yes. have to come up with 
a, a plan laid out. It just has to be ideas for brainstorming. Mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. It's okay. not locking us into anything. We're willing to do. Right. right, exactly. And some things may not pan out. Not every idea is affordable. Exactly. That's, that's why you have workshops. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, so Katie, you will mark that we uh, have this on the agenda. Is that Wonderful. everything? All right. Cool. Yeah, so that's, that's really more. it. Can I be picky for one second? No. Yeah. Yes. Um, on the consent agenda, Mark, you um, uh, that you approved, you have Mark Flower um, saying the public hearing for the 26th. Can we? Can you officially set that for 7:35 to yes. immediately follow? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I have a policy proposal before the board. But okay. Wait, actually, I'm going to forget this. It's very simple. Would you mind? No. Yep. Uh, again, Katie reminded you, the consent agenda, and Ariane actually reminded me, um, there was actually a mistake. We were supposed to have a new one that uh, we approved minutes that we only saw yesterday. So could we just make a note that the minutes we just got were not, are not, are going to be approved at our next meeting and were not approved tonight? I think we'd better act on that. Yeah, I'd like to, that's the motion I'd like to make. Actually. All right, I'll second. All, any other objection or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good, so sorry, a little housekeeping. So please, your proposal, your policy. Okay, we can have a little bit of confusion, but everybody has it. We always talk about doing better information. Oh, that? yes, that's so. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, yeah, that was true. Sure. And we talk about it, but we don't do it. And so I am proposing a formal policy that in an effort to have as much common knowledge and information as to the activities of governors of the village of New Broad, it shall be the policy that all draft minutes of all meetings of the village board, the planning board, and the zoning board of appeals be distributed to all members of those boards within two weeks of meetings. Further draft meeting minutes of village board meetings shall continue to be distributed to department heads. Could I suggest a friendly amendment? Sure. That any member of the public may also be added to the distribution list of a particular board after request, at the request no. or request in the clerk? I don't think no? that because they'll be online. And they can oh, that's true. They can just look at them. You're right. Yeah. I would draw. Yeah, and I, I'd and really I like to see them online. This is very important because I think things come up that we don't know the planning board is discussed. We're asked to, to think about something, and they've already discussed it. And if we all had the minutes, and promise to keep up with them, we would be much better informed about what's going yeah. on and what is needed of us. I agree. Okay. And you know, I, I'd also, I have a note to myself on a similar, I, <coughs> I blanked on this being in the packet, but something that we had done that this, that the prior, that this pr last prior board had chosen not to do when we all took office two years ago, we stopped a, a tradition that had gone for years of once a month having liaison updates at the board table because we thought it would be redundant. And so maybe we should also consider that. Not, not consider tonight, but just think about it. If it's something that's worth but doing. I, I haven't thought about that, but I think they should be written reports. We had a quarterly. Yeah. Yeah, and that no, was no, kind no. of didn't work. Yeah. Before every meeting, if there is a, if you've had a ZBA meeting, then it's my responsibility for the next board agenda to send out a brief report that goes in that packet. Mm. A report in addition to the minutes? Okay. So somebody's going to be responsible for well, see, I don't get, uh, uh, The point yeah. of the minutes was so that we would get. Yeah. Okay, but there are committees like Shade Tree. The donkey. What the should keep minutes? Environmental. Yeah. Okay. The, you really need to maybe if people want to know. I mean, I've tried to keep the board pretty yeah. well informed right. what Shade Tree is doing, and. So I'm not sure that if, well, let's try it with the minutes yeah. first, Jason. That's, you're right, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I think what we could do is instead of having <coughs> reports from every committee, I mean, and obviously we can still think about this, but maybe if there's something that, sh that should be brought up, it's not just a regular meeting that is, you know, that needs something that needs board attention, village board attention, that's what we bring up. Uh, because I think part of why we, we didn't do the liaison reports was because it really did take a lot of time. Yeah. yeah. All right, so it, um, I'll move this if it hasn't been already. I moved it. All right. Second. All right. Any more discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, we have two more things. We don't need to talk about meetings because the school board. 
Uh, Cavalusa, there was a concern about the liquor license and the police report. Um, yes. Well, I guess really my question is just the idea that, you know, I don't, I have no, I have no baseline um, for, you know, it, it said we got the police report that there were the 30. We got it tonight, yeah. Yep, but it didn't come yeah. down this far. I got it. Oh. Tom, Tom took yours. No, I got it, on, I got it online. Oh, you yeah, got, you got it online. online. And, and Jason, yeah. I think you have three copies that oh, have that, other I people's names on them. Favorite. Oh, Trusty oh, Rocco, Trusty Rhodes, <laughs> Joseph Ariel. Sorry, I thought there was a lot of prime and Cavalusa kind of for a second there. No, no. I put them in there. Like there four pages she, of calls. She was on a... Yeah. <laughs> we passed We got it. Yeah, I'm All right, the table. Joe, can you answer this? What, how do we assess this? Well, and well, what is I, the point I of assessing I need to finish answering my question, actually. Because, you know, the idea that, you know, some... In January, for instance, there were no calls. In December, there were three. In May, there were five. You know, I, I just don't know, like, 37 calls from July of last year 11 months. to May of this year is what? You know, it's how does that... Of operation is that a lot of... Right. Uh, right. Like, I mean, I know how many times I call the police yeah. from snugs, and it's way less than that, but I don't account for all the other bartenders, you know, or all the other times the police might be called, or what it's like at PNGs versus Cavaloosas. Like, I just have no reference point as to what this sheet means. And does it matter? I mean, do we and actually have any matter. authority to say no? This is just... Or is it informative from the SLA? I, I don't actually think oh, we have no. any... The whole point of our adopting... The policy that we will act on renewing liquor licenses is because if we feel there is something questionable and we want the state liquor authority to analyze it more closely before they give a right. heart launch renewal, that this is our opportunity to right. request that. So, Joe, you know the question now? What's, what's your advice? Uh, I mean, I think... What Sally said just now is, is, of course, true. The reason for the review is because you may see something that uh, gives you pause in the renewal. Um, I, I guess I don't really know how to answer the question for the board in, in the sense that, for instance, if you look down this list sort of along the lines of what Ariana's talking about, it, it's a lot of items. But many of them are suspicion, suspicious person prints. Right. Which I can mm -hmm. tell you from another past life of mine. Is, is As a suspicious that person? Is the, that is the, the column that's more interesting, which I don't know how to read. The disposition. I don't know what R means. I don't know what C means. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't either. But let, to, to, to finish my thought, that is often the... The, the owner of the establishment being oh. cautious themselves to make sure that nothing happens. Right. right. You know, that, that nothing ha And then others are, you know, you've got a lockout on the car. And, uh, you know, things right. like that. So, well, that's why I, I just don't know. You know, I mean, I, I appreciate this information. And I mean, do you have any idea? I, I'm not, you know, not to put you on the spot, Kurt, but in ter you know, in relation to like what. You know, what should we be looking for? Like, I mean, I think that all of this is probably pretty, you know, average for a bar. Yeah, and I'll maybe we should ask the chief. I'll tell you, for yeah. instance, what my instinct is that what you might be focusing on when you look at these renewals is are there 13 instances of serving a minor? Right. I mean, that's what right. the liquor mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Are you, are you holding up your end of the bargain in how you operate your establishment with respect to? the service of liquor on premises. Mm. So those are the kinds of things, that's my instinct that, uh, of what should matter most to you. Well, um, suspicious but, person, I would suspect, the bar called the police because they were concerned. Maybe. And or a robbery. Know. Oh, yeah. Kurt, I don't know what scene was. Here. Do we have any idea how many, um, how many uh, charges or uh, against a, a bar or a bartender for, for service of a minor? Um, obviously that happens every you mean on this list? There are well, not. List there list are there are they none. would have been charged. I haven't seen the list, so I really don't know. I, I understand it has some codes without a legend. It's not really meant for others outside of law enforcement to decipher. I haven't seen well, it. Well, I mean, uh, well, pass. Yeah, pass through the list over to him. Um, I mean, I plan on bringing this. Speak to I mean, I, I plan on asking a police commission on Thursday, you know, just in terms of, you know, what their thoughts are on this. 
Um, you know, and I don't, I didn't see anything in particular that really raised a red flag for me in terms of liquor license renewal. It was more just, you know, what does, you know, what am I looking at as, a, you know, in reference to anything else? Well, do you want to get the advice of the police commission and come back? In the meantime, oh, I'm happy to do that, but but it doesn't. I mean, for me, it really doesn't. Uh, you know, I, I think what Joe is saying is right in the in looking for on the list it being, you know, serving an under a, you know, a minor basically is something that I would feel. And that's not ever going to show here. Surely. No, it isn't. Because this is the nature of this is This is our police, and our police generally don't deal with that. Is that way? Because that's, so that's, that's, that's not my thing. What I do is have a definition of what the disposition codes mean. Because it seems to me that this is meaningless if I don't know what these mean. T-O. T-O-R-C. You know. Well, I guess my question is, I mean, I'm happy I'm happy to go. I, I plan on asking police commission regardless of what we do here just because I want to know for my own information. Right. I'm happy to bring it back. To but, um, but, you know, I guess my question for everyone here is, for, for me personally, nothing on this would make me say, we should look into whether or not they should have a liquor license renewed. No, um, and so, the thing that you know. would make me look into it would be 15 serving a minor serving or serving minor. somebody who's always authority intoxicated. Or a bar fight. Or the NP3, 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 there are three of them. Right, there are three bar fights. Yeah. In the okay. course of 11 months. You know, one thing. But I don't know whether the owner called the police because a bar fight was occurring and he wanted to stop. Right. Or whether a neighbor called because there was a bar fight. That's why I need to know what these things mean. Yeah, because C might mean call and R might mean respond. That might be that the police, in other words, was Mm. R could mean that they responded to things yeah. that they became aware of. But here's I mean all of the ones on the very right hand right hand columns they call call for service. Yeah. yeah. But Ariana but the one thing I wanted to point out was that there are things that were called that aren't on this list. Because in public comment this evening, we received input that the police were called. Has nothing to do with the if that had nothing to do with Cabalusa. If they have an oasis. But that's not Cabalusa. It's a different... It, you know, we're not renewing every liquor license owned by this business. We're renewing Cabalusa alone. Oasis is a different business. It's a different liquor license. But it's all the same corporation. It doesn't matter. We're not being asked to do... And also, we had nothing to do with the parking lot. Sorry. Was so. the complaint about noise Oasis or Cabalusa? Also, and then who... I believe it would have been a waste. It would have been a waste. No, actually, it would have been that either. It was in the parking lot owned by Robert Down. It was in a private, private parcel that, that was, a, it was in the parking lot. The officer it was in, the in the parking lot. In this particular call, the officer seems to have referred to a specific permit from the village board for a specific period of time that day. Where did that information come from? Exactly. And obviously, he meant, well, the officer, he or she was referring to a particular establishment. Again, I don't know this firsthand, but. Well, I, I think that really is a question for the police. The pro, the, oh, I'm sorry, the noise complaint is completely irrelevant, unless Joe contradicts me, has nothing to do with the issue at the table right now. Um, has, this has to do I think they're tangential issues, but I think, the, I think that's a question really for the police commission. And yeah. the legend, and for us to understand what these things mean, this position, yeah. We have to. Okay, you know, now That's we're going in circles now. So, we, so why don't so we have you? Yeah. Well, well my question for the board is does, does do the answers to these questions that I will find out Thursday have, you know, do they have implication as to how we would vote at this table? They don't for me. Well, they do for me, but I think this is the second meeting that this has been on our It agenda. is. Yep. The first time we didn't have any of these other information, though. We so didn't have right. any information, so we tabled the case. So I don't think, in fairness to the owner, that we should table it again. That we should table it. Again. I, I'm happy to vote on this tonight. I'm just. I was asking. Why don't you make that motion then? Okay. Um, I I move to uh, 
approve the state liquor authority renewal application for 58 Main Street. Is there a second? Second. Any more, any more, excuse me, any yeah. more discussion? Yes? Finding the amendment not move to approve, move to have no objection to the renewal. It's true, you don't really approve. Right, we're not yeah. going to that friendly? It, right? Yes, accepted. Okay. It's accepted. Uh, all in, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, abstain? Um, and now we have the B3. Joe, are we gonna are we gonna change this law tonight and act on it? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to read Gail Gallery's. Um, oh, thank you. It was it was sent to everybody. This everyone got it, but I should yeah. Just read it out loud now. That's fine. Um, Gail Gallery, um, chair of the transportation I'm implementation. Sorry, I'm just gonna say. I, she regrets that an out-of-town commitment is preventing her attending the continuation of our public hearing on the proposed B3 zoning. Uh, therefore, she is grateful for sh my sharing with the Village Board the, and the public the TIC's commendation for the planning work that has been done on this and the Village Board's support for advancing it. Route 32 North is one of the seven growth areas identified in the final recommendations of the Transportation Land Use Project, which were adopted by the Village Board and Town Council in December 2006. The proposed B3 zoning conceptually incorporates the mix of residential, commercial, and retail uses envisioned by the findings of that study for this area and represents the first significant action on the uh, transportation land use recommendations for future land use. While our committee has not discussed the specifics of the proposed rezoning and therefore has not been able to formally endorse the proposal, the Transportation Implementation Committee considers the objectives of the recommended changes to be a gratifying advancement of the land use goals for our community. Thank you very much, and thank you, Gail. Um, so, gentlemen, Kurt, Joe, what do you think? What, what's your advice? With regard to what we were talking about during um, uh, the public hearing, um, one solution that, that's uh, more concise and immediate could be to, um, again, it's uh, the bottom of, of page one, and, and it's 212-13G1A, um, could read as follows. A requirement for mixed use development, development at ground floor level along road frontage shall be retail goods and services with professional offices and or residential uses and the stories above ground level. Again, the indication, the implication there is that services, of course, it could be dry cleaning or it could be a doctor. In other words, those are those are professional services. Oh, I'm sorry, in retail, they're professional retail services. Um, so you want those at ground floor. Um, so again, retail goods and services with professional offices um, and or residential uses in the stories above. That's um, that was just uh, since since we heard the comment. Yeah, I think that's. Fine, and just to be more precise, I could, again, if it's the consensus of the board. Um, so it would say, a long, uh, requirement for mixed use development, development at ground floor level along road frontage shall be retail goods and services and or professional offices with professional offices or residential uses in the story above the ground floor because I think what, again, what we talked about was really allowing that, that Just discretion on the second floor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and residential uses oh. only um, in any story above the second story. And I'll give this to uh, Katie, obviously, at the board. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so it would read, requirement for mixed use development. Development at ground floor level along road frontage shall be retail goods and services and or professional offices with professional offices or residential uses in the story above the ground floor and residential uses only in any story above the second story. How about allowable? Do you need the word allowable on the second floor? Uh, Wait, residential, residential on the, on the floor above the ground floor. Yeah, you know, we'll say. Um, is that true, Joe? Do we need that word? I, I don't know that we. 
the concept should be better. So what I'm going to say is, because I don't want I don't want the law being changed. Uh, no offense, Sally, but you know you know because of individual comments, it should be a consensus yeah. on on what's going what on. What Michael was looking for. Well, but what are we looking for? Is the well, but, but I think we agreed, yeah. and, and here's what I, here's what I think he we lost did. his proposal. Per permitted uses shall be as follows: colon development at ground floor level, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, that we keep it the same. We're not touching. Right. It. By putting that in, by putting permitted uses shall be as follows at the beginning of that sentence. I think we you got it. we address your issue. Yeah. So that would be the change. May I ask one? Sure. Uh, and this is a, a question. Sounds very picky, but in the one instance uh, where you say uh, professional offices or should it be and or just to uh, because you could have both on uh, the second floor. You might have both the residential and professional offices. Yes. And then only. Yeah. That's important for the text. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, I, we say um, I mentioned uh, professional offices. Maybe even the term commercial offices. In other words, I, I had originally intended professional offices to be those walk-in professional services that you might get, be it a doctor or um, right. or something like a dry cleaner. Even a lawyer. Even a lawyer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But if I have yeah, a yeah. consulting business where the public doesn't walk in, I still professional. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I got. I again, by the way, that, that reminds me of, of the the two comments we heard. Um, uh, both resonated with me. In other words, my intent in, in drafting this was not to really push business into compartments in this district. It was. I hadn't. Um, I, I would like very much if um, sponsors of office buildings would come to um, North Chestnut and build four-story office buildings. They are wonderful rateables. They would. Yeah. Well, they're just plain wonderful. They demand ratables. the least amount of infrastructure and they produce the most taxes. Yes. Right. But the focus of this was, was not to create a commercial district, but a mixed use. Yes. Right. That's so right. Yeah. Exactly. We wanted, so that's to, to Michael's point. Yeah. I um, think you got. All right. Now, well, then, I, you know, I'll, I'll move that we adopt this local law. Is there a second? second. Discussion? Oh, I know, now, now we have a discussion. I just want to get on the floor. need to do secret. Uh, I'm sorry. I need, I, I, I need to advise the board that um, a negative declaration is what I recommend. Oh, and, yeah. And, really? And, oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And I'm based sorry. on the, the, um, uh, the current that the board is about to consider, I'd like to prepare a negative declaration. So we can't adopt it tonight? Well, actually, I would say that you simply are directing village planner to um, to prepare and why, and file. Um, which creates another delay, unfortunately, um, yeah. after three months. Yeah, but we it? can't adopt the, the local law until the neg I don't so. think that's true. You know, you're, been, you're adopting a negative declaration that we don't need the planner to prepare a written document. We adopt the negative Joe? Yeah, Directing. Do we have to have the neg deck you, before you can we do, say you, it? You can do. I think what Kurt is suggesting, I don't disagree with it as a general policy going forward. Um, he's suggesting that it would be prudent to have the written neg deck adopted because it would contain in writing all your all the necessary findings, et cetera. It would make, it make Can we adopt the local law before we have a written neg deck? Oh, absolutely not. That's well, what no, I mean. I'm sorry. Delay. Before you have a written neg deck, no, yeah. you don't have to have a written okay, neg deck. Okay, thank you. We just but have you, to do it. But you have to do it. You, okay. In other words, if you wanted to act on this law tonight, you, first of all, we have heard from the county, right? Yes. Um, we do not need to hear from the planning board because it was. Do we need to hear from? No, we did hear from the county. That was my question. Right. Why this hadn't ever come up before? So we're all set in terms of those things. So really, the only prerequisite to adopting it is <coughs> to make a, a negative declaration under secret that you've considered all the potential environmental impacts and find that there are no potentially significant adverse environmental impacts. Now, you can so, do that or Okay, that. so I withdraw my motion and make that one instead. Okay. But we have the plan recommended indeed. I'm just making the motion. Okay, I'll second yeah. it. Okay, so. Any discussion on the neg deck? Do we so want to neg deck? I want to say if I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what we're uh, voting on is a neg deck with a provision that the written uh, version of that be provided to the village board before the next meeting? No. no. I think if you're good, no, I, and I understand why, Tom, that's, that's where you are. What, I, what I'm saying is if you want to act tonight, 
you should put your neg deck on the record orally in the way that I just did. That which is on the floor. Right. 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 If you, if the board feels like having the written neg deck in front of them is for some reason, you know, they'd rather do that, then you should authorize Kirk to draft it and adopt it next time. Which would mean you would not act on the local law tonight. But why right. can't we do it? Why can't we, why can't we act on the, on the neg deck <laughs> and still uh, charge him to provide us with, for the record, the written neg deck at the next, for the, the next what, meeting. For the record, that's what you were saying. For the record, sure, but it's really, it's my, it's my office work to prepare the reasoning. The conclusion that it will not have a significant adverse impact on the environment is the board's. I would be preparing the negative declaration and enumerating the items uh, based upon the EAF, the full EAF uh, parts one and two that I prepared for, for this project. Okay. Which would so, not require board approval, Joe? It, well, it would, again. Which means we can't adopt the law tonight. You can, what, I'm, what I am suggesting. How, no, no, stop, 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 stop. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me see if I understand this. We can say this is a neg debt and adopt the law set unseen, which means we then cannot have a written neg debt. Because if we require, if we need a written neg debt, we can't act on the law tonight. It, it, here's the thing. Yes? You are not required to have a written neg debt. Okay. okay. You can, that, that's, so that's, okay that's, that's the piece that's right. been missing. Okay. What, what, what Kurt is suggesting, and I will say, I do believe Kurt and I have talked about this. I think it would be good practice going forward, and Kurt and I have talked about that we're both perfectly happy to do it, that in the future, in preparation for these discussions, you'll have a draft mm -hmm. neg deck in front of you to act on. Right. That is, that is you know, good policy. It makes very clear what the and record is. And after we finish the business. And, and that's no, so that's no problem. What I am saying is I would not adopt tonight a neg deck and approve this local law and say and have the planner prepare the neg deck because I think it leaves open the criticism that you didn't really have the neg deck in mind when you did the vote. So, so what I'm saying is either decide that you want to act tonight, in which case you can adopt the motion that I suggested, and I do believe that that protects you, um, or if you want a written neg deck, wait to do it all. Yeah. I don't want, I don't think right. it's wise. So my motion's on the floor to have just the oral name deck. Is there a second to that? I second. Okay, thank you. I didn't remember. Uh, any other discussion on that half of the question? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 I will move the adoption of the B3. Wait, Tom has not voted yet. Yeah, I'm still, con I, oh. I'm, I'm mildly concerned, but I'll vote, I'll vote I, I. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Alright, you're going to make the second motion. I'll move the adoption of what we're calling it. Because Just the local law. Local local law. law. Yeah, but he stole my papers. Doesn't matter. Katie will fill it in. It's the, okay. it's the non on chestnut on B gateway. And I'll second B that. Okay. Any further discussion on adopting the law? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 And now I'd like to move a motion that in the future, when a secret declaration is required, that it be presented in an appropriate and timely manner. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all so much. I just realized um, I have been working on this for nine years. <laughs> There's one local law. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and thank you, Kurt, for all of your work and Joe as well. Joe. We have just one more piece of business, which is to go into executive session and receive a brief. Uh, I think that's it, right? Wait, we did the discussion. I, I guess I I guess I didn't realize that. Uh, Sally pulled the other. I, it was mis misdescribed on the. On the agenda. Oh, okay. That, that was the sense. thing about the, the, the minutes going back and forth. Right, yeah. right. Well, I knew, I, I had read that proposal. I just didn't realize that, I didn't, that was. I didn't either. Until okay. it, yeah, so well, we did that okay. already. Well, but I, I wanted to talk about public comment procedures. Oh. As part of that. That was. Oh, okay. You, you, might, you might not see I it under your uh, Sharpie drawing. No, there. it's over here. All right. Would you be so kind as to send Joe a copy? of the amended board procedures that yes, bound us up to begin with? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, so Ariana, wait, so Ariana would like to add something to the agenda now? Well, well or the, or it's in thought, 17. You thought it's, it was going to be, okay, yeah, 17. It's discussion on public comment procedures as okay. addressed by Trustee Bass. It's already you, on there. Why don't you start that then? Um, I, I mean, we, we sometimes have, uh, well, one time in particular recently, we had a public comment that lasted until 9 o'clock, and I think the majority of the reason was because we 
responded in, and then ended up having a dialogue, and it ended up, you know, digressing into a major dialogue. Um, and I don't think, I, I mean, I don't think that that is necessarily wrong. Um, sometimes I think we need to have a major dialogue with the public, and we should be open to that. But I think. Um, you know, the point has been made to us during public comment, and the point has been made to, uh, to myself personally outside of public comment um, with the idea that it's the public's comment. Um, you know, and it's not. It's not our time to go back and forth with them. It's the time for the public to comment. Um, I think maybe there are times where we have a really packed agenda and we want to say at the start of the meeting, because we have a 17-item agenda, we are going to limit public comment to two minutes per person. Um, and I think that that would be very fair. And nights we have light, light agendas, we can make it as long as people want to you know, speak for. But I think that it, it really... Um, you know, I heard what the public said, and I feel like the idea that we have the floor all night long, and they have this time where they make their comments, maybe we think their comments are wrong, maybe we know they're wrong, maybe we have information that is completely, could clarify what they're saying. I think that we shouldn't necessarily say it. Um, you know, I, I, I totally knew you were going to make that face, Sally, because I talked to you about this before. Yes. Um, I mean, and I think if somebody comes in public comment and deliberately and willfully makes erroneous statement. Or accidentally. Well, accidentally. So but I think you could know accidentally. Yeah, yeah. But if the intent is to do that, then I think the board member or the board as a whole has the right to correct that. Other than that, I agree with you. I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I just think it can be, it can wind up in well, I mean, and maybe unnecessary death. Well, well, I think I think that that's what this conversation is supposed to be about is how do we, how do we judge it? How do we limit it? What kind of parameters do we want to put on this? If any, maybe none, I don't know. But I think that if we're answering the public, we should be answering a question more than having a rebuttal. Uh, what did Tom and Rebecca think? Well, I, I sent you comments. Yeah, we had an email back and forth yes. about that. Um, it says in here on the guidelines for public mm -hmm. stuff, these are guidelines rather than mm -hmm. laws, that the speakers should limit their remarks to three minutes. But we absolutely totally ignore that. I mean, I've heard people here speak for 15 or more minutes with like extraordinary repetition. Um, and in think. some instances berating the village board. I think that on the whole, public comment should be their comment. They, they can make comments about it. They can actually, well it says again, it should have something to do with village business. So I suppose if somebody gets up and, and speaks about uh, World War One, which actually they'll be able to do, which they can, of course they can do. You can public as far as uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that is an interesting point. The um, from my understanding, you can't limit people's discussion based on the topic. Like uh, someone, and you don't even have, and people don't even have to live here. They can still come into public comment and talk about whatever they want in public comment. <laughs> <laughs> they could talk about World War One if they so chose. And that's, is, am I right about that? I, I think that's that's generally true as a free speech principle. I think in terms of you do have some latitude, and that's why we're discussing yeah. any of this stuff. The law does give you the latitude to run your meeting in an orderly and efficient way. So, and that's why you can at some point say, "Listen, we need to limit this, or we'll have three more speakers." I mean, all those things are legal. They're problematic sometimes, but they're legal. So I don't think that we should adopt these guidelines unless we mean them. Because the guidelines say you, the chair, you have the authority to make certain decisions. And it says in the guidelines people should be limited to three minutes unless we make a decision that that not be the case. It says that they should address the board, and address the board is what they're supposed to be doing, period. That is the point of public comment. They're supposed to be addressing their comments to the board only on topics which are germane to the business of the village. If we don't mean any of these things, then let's get rid of this as a set of guidelines and adopt guidelines that we mean. But we do mean them, and we adopted them, and we just amended them. 
So let's follow. Well, so before you've had, so Rebecca hasn't spoken on this no. yet because this is something I think we all should right. have a say on publicly right. about this topic. What do you think? Yes. Rebecca? Well, I definitely agree that public comment should be public comment, and um, I think it's perfectly reasonable for us to ask that the topic remain within village business, but of course, you know, if someone is coming in to tell us something about something going on in Kingston that they think we should be interested in, I certainly don't have any objection to something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I certainly don't want to see a back and forth dialogue. I agree, maybe a question with a short answer, but you know, if once public comment is closed, if one of us wants to make a comment, I don't see a problem with that. But I think public comment should remain within their domain. Please. I think that uh, the determination of response to, uh, or e either to or about what, what people say in public comment, you know, I, I, I'm, this is going to sound like awfully authoritarian. I think it belongs with the chair. I think the chair then could look to board members and say, "All right, you, correct you know, is there? Mm -hmm. Do you have information that would be relevant to this?" But there's got to be something. Otherwise, any one of us is going to say, "You know, like God did." You know, right. <laughs> you know yes. uh, that's not true, or blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. You see. Um, we have a chair in order to uh, to use these guidelines to good effect in order for us to accomplish the business of the village. Because that's what the only reason we're here is is not just to chat with people, but it's to accomplish the business of the village. And public comment informs us, even if we think it's not relevant to us. So it, it still it, it informs us yes. about the, the interests and the passions of people in the village or who are passing through the village. <laughs> uh, so that we're informed in, in our actions to govern the village well. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would like to put this burden on you well, <laughs> to make yeah. decisions it is part of my job description. about the, uh, the governance, if you will, of public comment and any time there will be interchange between the board and the public during that. Well, let me, since I'm the one who, who tries to steer the public comment, let me, maybe I can at least explain why sometimes it goes on a little longer, because it's not always accidental. Um, oh, I'm I think about, think so. Yeah, well, I'm just, well I'm, there's very precise reasons, I think. One is, I, I understand where you're coming from. I'm not sure how practical it is to figure out those deadlines ahead of time because of the difference in issues. Like some of you don't have any comment at all. Um, and I'm trying, I was trying to think of an example. A good one is when uh, we had a couple of folks here about the Water Street, the parking at Water Street, or no, when we were redoing the parking regulations. You know, mm -hmm. remember that about the rigid versus flexible and all that? Yeah. And it was a back and forth and it was a long one, but you know, in trying to read an audience, I'm trying, I try at least to keep in mind a couple of things. One is that um, public speaking is the number one fear in America, bigger than sharks and death and all that. Right. So when someone comes out, I assume there's others behind them who are not coming out, who they're kind of not formally, but informally speaking for. There's others who have a concern. If one person's coming out, they're usually not the only one who has this, the concern. So especially right. when you know there's a whole street of works re residents, you're talking to, because they're going to go back and repeat what happened. So I think you need some amount of conversation in order for people to feel heard and understood kind of the repeating back what people say, and do you really mean this, or, or can you clarify it for us here? And I remember, um, I think it was actually John Litton who was saying, you know, talking, um, and he went on at length because depending on the topic, especially with people who are not used to public speaking and, and speaking concisely, it may be difficult to, to get your thoughts out in Absolutely. a few minutes, you know? And, and so like trying to balance all of these different elements can be tough, and, and so I remember that one example with the, the parking reg was that I know it went on when I could feel the frustration building, but it was almost like it was worth us being frustrated for five more minutes to prevent 10 more people being angry the next day because they, they didn't feel heard or whatnot. And if you actually watch the audience sometimes at a board, because uh, there are boards who refuse to speak at all to public comment. Like I gave a testimony at the college about um, the aqueduct shutdown um, and what it would do to us last fall. 
and it was it was stone faced. Like the people there were just the, from the DEP, like had zero reaction at all. It was almost inhuman, and it was incredibly alienating. Like I, I like I was a, I'm used to it. I'm afraid to speak. So it's almost like it, it as a the conversation adds a little human element. If it goes too far, that's one thing. You know, I wouldn't want to go too far the other direction. Is what I'm saying. You know, like being well, too I, too closed down that we, we provoke frustration. If I mean, that makes that, sense. That's why I said you know we can gauge it based on how packed our agenda is or what the topic is mm -hmm. or you know how many people are here to speak to it or things like mm -hmm. that. I think I think it, there is a lot of leeway and discretion to be used in it. But I just, we have a long agenda. Right. I, I just thought it was important for all of us to get on the same page as to how we view it and to understand where we're coming from so that say we're in in a public comment and you know I start to respond to something that I that was you know said that I don't agree with one of you can say hey I don't remember that conversation we had where we, mm -hmm. we talked about not doing that um, you know, and, and we're the we ones can, who could be concise. We can keep each other in check by having this right. kind of dialogue. And you know what? What might help also is something that I used to do, but I, for some reason stopped anymore. Is when the room is packed anyway, just to start out with the reminders before public comment starts. Right. Because yeah. the other thing too is, is, it's for me, it's not about us because we're the ones who are supposed. We asked to be here. You know, we're, we get the paycheck to be here, and so it's not about us. It's about them. However. When people go on and on again, it's not even, it's not disrespectful to us, it's disrespectful to the person sitting next to them who has to sit and wait, to, who's waiting to speak. So reminding the public that please try to limit your comments, be concise, not for our benefit, because we'll be here till 1 a.m. if we have to be, we signed up for this. Right. But because we got a lot of people here, and yeah. be respectful to your neighbors. And if, if you find yourself repeating yourself, kind of close it off and let the, because someone else might make the point. You know, we could maybe help yeah. people remember how to, how to do this, because we're the great. professionals, you know? We should know how to how to speak publicly. They don't have. We should expect them to not. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. Another thing that I would like to see us do is to encourage people to, if they really have an opinion on it on a different topic, to encourage them to put something in writing, uh -huh. which they can read, because then it then it's um, becomes a better part of public record. And, and if you post. Whatever rules you do settle on, and, and for the moment these are them, and you can modify them if you want, I would suggest posting them independently, that section of your procedures, somewhere really prominent on Have your it, page. Um, yeah, on the agenda, yeah. Because the other thing right. is that if people know that those are the mm -hmm. general rules, mm -hmm. and they can be amended, and you can say yeah. that they may be amended or service, because okay. the point is, most people, if, if no, and most of the people who want to speak, um, at, on a topic, obviously feel passionately about it. We'll probably do that kind of homework. And the truth is, you can put a lot into a three-minute statement if right. you know ahead of time that, that, that that's generally what you're talking about. And you just throw it out. Yeah, and you throw it out. So make it educate people ahead of time that that's mm -hmm. the idea. Yeah. So yeah, that's something. So we maybe revisit this in a couple of meetings, see if it works, see if, like, see if things yeah. go smoother. Yeah, well, awesome. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Sure. Yes. Now I move to go into executive session. Second. Actually, wait, hold on, wait. Would anyone mind if we took a five-minute break before we go into executive session? I suggest we don't need an executive session. That it might be better if the attorney either meets with, sends out ahead of time the list that the board prepared and agreed upon, and then they would have an opportunity to meet with Joe and ask any questions. <coughs> they also need to be provided mm. with your contract. Any objections? No. Is, is, well, specifically Rebecca and Tom, is that it, all right to get the written update? Because we've all been updated yeah. the whole the, I, I agree. the contract. Yeah. They need the old contract. Yep. They, they, got, they have the, yeah, they have yeah, the contract. Yeah, the contract. The CSC. CSC. Yeah, yeah. But I was talking about the yeah. general overview of all the litigation we're facing. Oh, that's different. I can do that. Actually, no, yeah. I'm sorry. You know what? We do. Did you talk to, uh, what's your name today? I did. Do we need to make a decision tonight? No. Okay. No. Um, then I do have just one more thing, then we can go. Um, and it's because it's topical. Um, and actually, not a half bad idea to have this on camera. You all got the emergency preparedness plan. I just, just for, oh, yes. just for very briefly, because the county, uh, because of the rain coming, and all the, we're going to get one to four inches in the county in the higher end. The ground is soaked. The county has uh, has created has um, um, opened their emergency operations center. Um, it looks we're not going to need one here. We're not it really. I think they're dealing looking at the mountain town and the flash floods. 
But just in case, because it's a good reminder for Rebecca and Tom who have been here, um, I just want, just in case you get the message that we are mm -hmm. opening the EOC, just so you know, all village trustees report here to this building. Um, I don't myself. Feel like well, not, not, not this week, I just mean in general. Oh, if something general. comes up. I mean, God forbid a truck goes over, turns over on Main Street tomorrow, just and so you know. Rebecca, it's your job to call us on. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because the role of the trustees and the Emergency Operations Center is to act as an interface between the command center and the public. So it's a matter of getting information out. Um, so that's really all you have to know. Uh, you, you'll read, read this, of course, but just in case if something happens um, and the EO, you get the message that the EOC is operational, um, report to Village Hall and we'll move from there. So I just want to make that. Do we, do we come up here or do we go to the fire station? You would go uh, up here. Up here. Yeah, you don't want to. You want to stay out of the way of the fire. The fireman going. Yeah, I'd like to suggest this, which have opposite foot rates on Farmgate. Look at it. The next meeting, we have the difficulties for the generator and get it in. Yep, I'm working with Nancy on that. And also, um, actually, that idea that Ellen had about looking at. Oh, there you are, Ellen. Uh, looking, I, didn't, I thought you were left, uh, to look into natural gas uh, seems to pan out very well. Blue tells me the numbers work very, very well. Well, except, you know what? What's that? When they were talking about doing this, they were talking with those of us on Fire Hill who wanted it. Mm. And when it looked like the village might go for it, they said, oh, and we can hook them up from Elton. So that means that those of us who fought hard for this in the first place. Well, let's talk about it. Please. The numbers, Please. the numbers, regardless, the numbers are very good for Village Hall in terms of saving taxpayer money at, at the very least. But part of my requirement, I think, is that Ellen and a few people work hard to have them approach Village Hall and people not be deprived as a result of. Well, I know Blue is interested in talking to yes. getting, to, especially now that Tom's on the board and can help. Um, smooth over the bureaucratic stuff. We'll talk about it offline, though. So, I move to, unless, is there something else? Are you sending me executive session? Yeah, yes, please. Okay. Um, I move to adjourn. Thank you. I'll yeah. second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And welcome, Tom and Rebecca. Thank Very you. nice first meeting. Uh,